um, Brandon Pfeiffer. Got a few friends I can trust I got a couple more, baby But we don't talk that much I've got a woman, thank God She's the best I've ever seen Well, she keeps me rolling Like an 18-wheel machine I'm on a roll But hey America See I'm looking for a sign Hey America Just some little sign of life See, I'm an Indiana boy with a, a heart that won't sit still Yeah, my cup is running over, but I still ain't got my fill Won't you pray for me, Mary, that I keep my spirit right And can you help me, Jesus, when I want to give up this fight I'm on a roll oh, oh, oh. I'm rolling on Yeah, see, I'm on a roll Hey, America See, I'm looking for a sign America Just a little sign of life Hey America See we've been living by faith and not by sight Driving through the mountains in the middle of the night We're so tired of waiting But I, I think I can see a light Hey America, America, just a little sign of life. Come on, come on, show us you got some life. Brandon. Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Abe Bonowitz with the Penalty Action, and we're sort of on the fly here as we wait to see what the U.S. Supreme Court does. Um, just refreshing the orders list again. Um, still no news, as far as I know, uh, but welcome. Um, this is our live virtual vigil. We'll be checking in with folks at the prison, um, possibly with other places in Texas if they call in. Um, we're going to hear from people that know uh, Jedediah and have been communicating with him. And we might have some surprise guests. Who knows? I do want to say that this is a space for people who oppose the death penalty. And if we get interrupted or interjected in the chat on the vigil on the uh, in, on the Zoom or in the Facebook page or wherever. Uh, there's no warnings. We're out uh, because we're here to be opposed to the death penalty. I also want to say that this is a little bit of a unique situation because um, we have a person who is Jewish, and I want to make sure that people who are Jewish and are coming um, recognize that this is a multi-faith event. We welcome everybody, and we welcome people of no faith. Death Penalty Action is not a religious organization, but we bring together everybody. Um, so um, 
you know, we're just going to be together and we're not here to debate things. We're here to be together in opposition to this execution. So, um, so welcome. If I invite people to share where you're watching from in the chat, um, and that's where you can also add any thoughts or comments. If you see something out there that you want to share from other places, feel free. Uh, and, um, and we'll try to convey some of that too. If you have questions or you know any thoughts, feel free. Um, I want to welcome the folks here that are watching from Project Hope to Abolish Death Penalty in Alabama. That's people on death row in Alabama are watching with us, and uh, somehow, and uh, and and people from all over the world. So, so welcome. Uh, as we always do, um, we want to start by remembering the victims. We remember the victims. We remember. Uh, Bertie Cunningham, uh, but not with more killing. And we're going to hear right now from Cantor Mike Zussman uh, to bring us all into focus on this. But before we do, I also want to just note again, uh, not only because it's a, a Jewish thing, but also because it's just been so horrific that, you know, we recognize the violence in the world that is happening and we recognize that there's all kinds of victims and um and a lot of people are suffering uh and and regardless of where you come from with whatever conflict and today in particular of course i'm talking about what's happening in israel um you know we are about no more violence we're about stopping the violence and about um everybody being able to live in peace and finding ways to do that and in, in and in this case, this this case is the perfect example. And we're going to talk about this. Jedediah's mission when he reached out to us was how do we help stop what happened to me and stop what I did from happening again to others? We're going to talk about that. But first, let's hear from Kent Zusman and um and, and and he as usual is with us by video because he is unavailable at this moment, uh, but he's got a special message for us. Allie? Shalom Aleichem. Peace unto you. Cantor Michael Zusman here with the thousands of members of L'Chaim, Jews Against the Death Penalty and Death Penalty Action. I'm recording this message because I can't sleep. I came out to our sukkah here and fittingly came to find that it's been breaking. You can see behind me the roof is coming coming off with the end of the sukkah holiday we had horrific attacks in israel and now we have this the state killing of our longtime pen pal and friend, a Jewish man, Jedediah Murphy. As we always do, we begin with a memorial prayer for his victim, Miss Bertie Lee Harmon Cunningham. Zichronali Vracha of blessed memory. Jedediah took Miss Cunningham's life in the year 2000. She was 79 years old at that time, having been born December 31st, 1919. We offer this memorial prayer for her now. And I ask you to keep in your thoughts, in your heart, Bertie Lee Harmon Cunningham. Il <laughs> 
חכמים שוכן ממנועים המצא מנוחה במעלות קדושים וטהורים, כזוהר רק ימזהירים את נשמת ברטי לי הרמן קנינגהם שהלך לעולמם. בגן עדן זה הם מנוחתה, אנא בעל הנחמים, הסתירהו בסתר כנפיך לעולמים. וצרור בצרור החיים את נשמתה. אדוני הוא נחלתה, וינוח בשלום על משכבה. May the memory of Miss Birdie Lee Harmon Cunningham be an everlasting blessing. May her abiding spirit, her neshama, be a loving guide for all who are privileged to know her. May her loved ones be comforted among the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem and the world. And may the killings end. Amen. Amen. As you can tell, for those of you who are, have been a part of these things, this one's hitting a little bit closer to home for Cantor Zeusman. We, he and I have both been back and forth with Jedediah um, directly for the last weeks, him much more than me. Um, also, Cantor Zeusman's been in touch with uh, David, Rabbi David Goldstein and um, and, uh, um, and 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 Vivian Schwartz, um, who is uh, Jedediah's wife, and uh, some in the legal team. And we're going to hear some, from somebody else who's been in touch with uh, Rabbi Goldstein as well in a moment. But first, uh, we got some new information today. Um, about the victim's family, which we hadn't heard anything about and, and we've been asking about. Um, but uh, um, Ali, can you set up the, the, the Carrie Bleckinger video? This is Carrie Bleckinger, who is a journalist who's um, been writing a lot now for the, the Los Angeles Times. She's got a, a piece on that was published today about the mental health issues with Jedediah. And also she spoke with um, a family member of Bertie Cunningham, and and she published a, a TikTok about that today. Um, Allie, you ready?
really unexpected interview for this death penalty story that I'm writing. Those of you who don't know me, I'm Carrie and I'm a reporter and I cover criminal justice, including a lot of death penalty stuff. Right now I'm working on a story about this guy, Jedediah Murphy, who is scheduled for execution in Texas later this month. A little over 20 years ago, he killed a woman named Bertie Cunningham. He said that it was an accident and that part of it happened in a dissociative blackout because he had a long documented psychiatric history of some really terrifying dissociative blackout. He says that he blacked out for part of it and then when he came to, did not actually mean to kill her and that it was an accident. He did always accept responsibility insofar as he never tried to claim innocence. I wrote a story about his case and about the status of the death penalty in Texas where I used to live and in California where I now live. And one of the last things that I did for that story today was to call the victim's family. The woman I spoke to said, yeah, we're hoping for clemency, which was not what I was expecting. She said that they were not supportive of the execution and that after sitting through trial and after reading a lot of the news coverage and the court filings, she thought he didn't actually commit some of the other crimes that he was accused of. That ended up being relevant because the prosecution's argument was that it wasn't just this one killing, that there were supposedly other crimes that he was involved in. The evidence on the other crimes was um, definitely pretty controversial and he never got charged in any of those. So it's not shocking that she might have doubts about them, but that was just not how I expected that conversation to go today. I just had a wildly unexpected interview for this death penalty story. So if you're not familiar with TikTok, sometimes you got to hit it really quick. Um, but uh, but the nutshell is, and this is the, you know, what, one of the things that the public did not know until today uh, is that the victim family opposes this execution. Um, and there's a link to that on our social media. If you want to go and watch that again, uh, she was speaking very fast, but that was the nutshell. Um, I see that Rabbi Goldstein is here and also Rabbi Gordon. I want to invite you, Rabbi Gordon, to, to, to say a few words. And then Rabbi Goldstein, if you'd like to, to share with folks, then uh, please turn on your camera and we'll, we'll bring you up next. Uh, Rabbi Gordon. Yeah, I, I think Rabbi Goldstein's driving. Um, he, and I'd say that he certainly knows Jedediah more than more than I do. I, I met him once um, and he described in great detail um, the incident that he was charged with. The way he described it was, as she said, that he that he woke up and didn't know what he had done, but he knew that he was a drug user. He knew that he had violent tendencies. And from my conversation with him, he turned himself in. Uh, Rabbi Goldstein's had more conversations with him as well as uh, as well as the opportunity to to put the fill in and do be Dewey, et cetera. Um, and so I defer to to my I mean, Rabbi Goldstein got me into prison life. Um, and he's as much of a mensch if you read about the Rebbe, Rabbi Goldstein embodies, what the what the Rebbe teaches in my mind. I, I'm not I'm not a Chabad. I'm not Hasidic. I'm not Orthodox. Um, but here's one where we are united for the uh, you know what it says when a Jew one Jew bleeds we all bleed, and especially now that Israel is being under attack, that all looking out for each other has been so important, and so. Um, you know, I got a feeling from Jedediah when I met him, and that's that's about all I can say. I, you know, I'm anxious to hear Rabbi Goldstein, but I don't want him to get into an accident. Well, thank you, Rabbi Gordon. Don't go away, but but Rabbi Goldstein, we're we're grateful that you're able to to join us. I hope you have some some good news for us, maybe, um, or else, uh, you yeah, know, we're just grateful to be able to be together with you. So. As we say in Judaism, I'm on Spilkis right now. We're all, which means I am have like ants in the pants. We're all waiting to hear the news. Um, I've been communicating throughout the day with my supervisor, Mr. Hazelwood from TDCJ Chaplaincy. And it's kind of very, very interesting to me how we're not supposed to have an opinion officially. But uh, he wrote me a text uh, in the last half hour saying that uh here i just want to look at my screen i don't want to misquote what he had said um uh, i'm thinking we will hear something by 5 30 which is in the next uh 
10 minutes. And he writes, I'm hoping the Supreme Court will let lower court ruling for stay stand. Which basically tells you something, because Jedediah is really loved by the people in the unit. Even the, the head chaplain himself, we had the, it was one maneuver that was going on that we wanted to show the, the when they were filing, I don't, and it wasn't an appeal, but one of the later filings, what was going on with Alan Dershowitz and this whole group, that he really wants to, meaning Jedediah, wants to join a program to become what they call a field minister. So the field minister is somebody who becomes like a life coach to other people. The problem was is that he could not sign up for that program because he's on death row and that makes him ineligible. But the group felt it's it's something that you know he wants to show that that's it, let it be known that that's really what he wants to do. So when it goes to the governor and the clemency package, we'll see that he really intends to to do something with himself to give back the society to the best of his ability. And um it was all back and forth, and just circumstantially, he could not, like, do it. So I spoke it over with the head chaplain. The head chaplain said, well, what we're going to do is like this. He's going to come, and I'm going to go to him, and he'll uh, I'll, I'll do an official I-60, which is an official office communication, and it will be uh, documented that he legally asked to be part of this program. And with that, I'll also take him the application, because they wouldn't give him the applications. I'll bring him the application. So at least it'll be filled out with the understanding and the note that if he if if it's a stay and he actually gets commuted to a life sentence, then it becomes a valid um, application to become part of that program. So the head chaplain likes him. I like him. We all love him. He's a brother. And I want to tell you that yesterday I went up to to, to pray with him. And it was a little bit of a confusing feeling because he he didn't know if he's going to be executed even till now. He doesn't know. But I was told we're preparing as if the execution is on. And it's very challenging as a religious leader to go. It's, you know, I know that we have Michael and Rabbi Dan on, and you all have set video with people in the hospital and you know it's heartbreaking to pray with somebody when they're about to pass away it's also very beautiful you're helping them transition to the next world but it's a different situation when you're going to death row and there is an exact time where the person is going to be murdered and it's just i, I can't describe the inner feeling it's just it's it's a pull in a few different directions so but we, we i had a full contact visit with him and another rabbi who has been a pen pal of his, Rabbi Yehuda Eber. And we had a full contact visit with him. And before we started, I told them, you know, Jedediah, one thing that I want to do with you today, in addition to saying the vidu, is I want to give you a hug because we're brothers. And he was so excited because, remember, an inmate that's on death row doesn't really interact physically with anybody else. And here he's getting a loving embrace. So I gave him a hug. Rabbi Eber gave him a hug. And then I said, you know, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put on tefillin. But before I put on tefillin, I want to tell you, you know, the situation in Israel. And he says, Rabbi, I'm very aware. He did write me an email. I know he probably wrote Michael one as well to his fans about how concerned he is with the situation in Israel. So I told him as a Chabadnik, you know, the Rebbe, when he instituted the tefillin campaign, said that putting on the tefillin um, is something that helps the situation elsewhere in the world. Rabbi, so, can, I, can I just let you know, there's a lot of people that are not Jewish on this Zoom. If you could just explain what tefillin are. Sure, sure, not a problem. So tefillin is, uh, uh, in English, they call it phylacteries. And in the in the text in Deuteronomy, it says, "You shall love the Lord your God upon your heart, upon your soul, and upon your mind, with all your heart, your soul, and mind." And then later in that paragraph, it says, "And you should bind them upon us as, as a sign upon your hand, and let them be a symbol between your eyes." So these are black leather boxes, and inside is the parchment. 
the four different places that it's mentioned in the five in the five books of Moses regarding binding it as a sign upon your hand and letting it be a symbol between your eyes. So this is what happens. So I mean, this is what what tefillin are, and it's a commandment that. Uh, it, that, that males wear it. Uh, I'm not going to get into the different denominations, but generally, I'm just going to quote the quote of Jewish law. It says that, uh, that the males over bar mitzvah, over 13 years old, they wear it every day, except on the Sabbath and on major Jewish holidays. So, um, in prison, it's very difficult to put them on unless you're in a regular like Jewish program, and he's in death row, so he could never put it on. First time he put it on was with me and that was a picture there is a picture out there floating around with me and him with tefillin on but and then the second and then uh this time he put on as well uh but this time i was able to put it on and i told him that you know the so the that the rebbe had explained that the talmud says that when the enemies uh will see the name of the lord upon you that they will they will flee so what does that mean it means that uh the Talmud explains these are the tefillin that are upon your head. So when the when the enemies will see the name of God upon you with the tefillin on your head, they're going to flee. And so this was this was a campaign that began in the Six Day War. So I explained it to Jedediah and I said, you know, um, you're putting on tefillin here is going to have a double thing. Number one, you're going to be able to um, fulfill a very precious mitzvah. Hopefully. It shouldn't be the last time you put it on. But at the same time, you're fulfilling putting it on in one of the darkest pla spiritual places possible in the sense that it's death row. And you're going to be bringing tremendous light into this very dark place. And the hope is, is that it will affect our brothers and sisters in this room. So he was very taken by that. And he said, yeah, I just, I dedicate this putting up the film to our brethren in Israel. And so we put on the tefillin, he said the Shema. Then we proceeded to the Vidui. And as I explained to him, the Vidui is this confessional prayer that you generally say before you pass away. And I said, you know, as many rabbis will tell you, just because you're saying this doesn't mean you're going to die. Many people have said it and they've gotten better or they things have changed. So I want you to know the same thing. We're just doing it to dot our eyes. He says, I understand, Rabbi. So he, he took his time and he said the full video that we say on Yom Kippur. And then afterwards, we took the tefillin off and uh, he thanked me and Rabbi Eber very much and Rabbi Gay for everything, for trying to, for, for like being strong for him and praying for him. And I said, you know, I don't know how to end this conversation with you because I don't believe in saying goodbye. So, you know, they, we say in Judaism, the Hitraot, till we see again. So I said, you know, the whole point with Moses and Joshua that told them, Chazak v'yamatz, God tells the same thing to Joshua, be strong. So we say in Texas, keep on trucking, you know, keep on going. And I said, you know, in the traditional Jewish belief system, we believe in the Mashiach and, uh, and God willing, we're going to meet again one day. So wherever it is, I look forward to seeing you very soon. He said, thank you, Rabbi. And he said, can I have another hug? And I said, sure. And I said, but this time I hug you. It's not just me hugging you. I just want you to know this is on behalf of all your brothers and sisters out there, all the activists, everybody who's tried for the last few months, if not years, to try to turn things over. And I want you to know you're not alone. And with that, I proceeded to give him a very long hug. And we ended our visit. And that's how it went yesterday. And I was on the phone with his wife a couple of times. And it's but he said, one of the things I do want to share is, and this is something that irks me the, the most, outside of it being the death penalty, is that he's in this state of unknowing. The state acts in this case as if it's happening. And he already has had his last meal. He is already in this waiting room that in the next 30 minutes, officially, he's supposed to be taken in to be executed. And it could be that the whole thing is just going to be canceled. And even if it's canceled, even this Supreme Court has till 11 o'clock tonight to rule. 
11 o'clock tonight, which they, I was told he will wait in that waiting room till 11 o'clock. And if the he said, and I was told by that chaplain, statistically, they don't like to rule in these cases. It's possible they won't even say anything. Uh, but nonetheless, Jedediah has to wait in that room till 11 o'clock tonight. Because at any point before 11, the call could come. And, and if they say execution, it's a one hour window and they proceed. Wow. You know, this is not, uh, thank you for all of this. And, and, um, and it's such a blessing because, you know, most people never get human contact, uh, loving human contact, even in the last minute like this. So it's, it's really a beautiful thing. I'm sitting here crying that, that you were able to do that. Um, and I'm so grateful for you. Um, I hope you can stick around for a bit. I want to, check with a couple other people. Uh, Rob Dunham is here from the Death Penalty Policy Center. But first, I want to uh, introduce, can, can you hang out for a bit, Rabbi? Sure, sure. I might shut my camera, but I'm here. I'm here. Oh, that's great. Terrific. So let's see. We're going to check in with the prison right now real quick, and then we're going to come to Rob. Uh, Shiva, Shiva, see you there. Shivas, can you turn on your camera? He was there a moment ago. He's out there at the at the walls unit, and um, we're waiting to see if he can come back. But uh, Abe, can, yes, can I can I add one thing? Of course. Um, first of all, in the you know, it just is as, as Rabbi Goldstein was talking. I was just imagining my one and only time with with Jedediah, and I remember him saying that prison saved his life which was such an amazing thing. He, he knew that he was in trouble with his, with his drugs, with his violence and with his, and he said, this is, this is how I became a peaceful man almost by being incarcerated. Um, and I know that the, the today is about Jedediah. The other Jewish man in, in the Polonsky unit is, is Randy Halprin, who, um, who had, he had not committed murder. He had escaped with a group of men and a murder was committed. And he was in the group in Texas as the law of parties. So he also got the death penalty, but this was 2000. It was 23 years ago. It was proven that his, that the judge was a bigot and an anti-Semite. And there were seven men who were all charged with, who were all given the death penalty Four have been executed. Um, he was heard to have said, bragged about giving the death penalty to those wetbacks and that kike. And so some of the men who were executed were Hispanic. And there's one of them, one of the seven is still is still alive on death row. But Randy had this same thing. He he got his day of execution four days before the execution date, which was today four years ago. And then it was the day after Yom Kippur. And on Rosh Hashanah, we have this liturgy that talks about what's going to happen in the coming year, who shall live and who shall die. And on Rosh Hashanah, I had seen him before Rosh Hashanah and promised that I would be there with him as a spiritual advisor at his request. And then he got the stay of execution. But it's still that every day we, we all know that every day is a blessing and that every day we're lucky and you know there's a passage that says be sure to confess the day before you die and how do you know the day before you die you don't so confess every day and um as rabbi goldstein said to know that it's coming on a specific date is so agonizing but it's also agonizing to know that it's coming sometime unless something happens. And so that's what I, I, I have in my heart, Randy as well. I know he's become very close with Jedediah. Um, and he, he's also spoken about how the growth Jedediah has made over the past few years. It's so just, just another personal note and um, uh, looking forward to hearing from, from Shivas. Thank you. Shivas, are you, are you there now? Can you hear me? 
We got some technical difficulties going on. Shavas, can you hear me? All right, well, he's there outside the prison, and we'll come back to you, Shavas. Um, let's go with Rob Dunham here from the Death Penalty Policy Center. Uh, Rob, um, what do we, you know, we're in, we could be in for another long night. We're, you know, we could be. Please yourself a little bit more and, and let us know what you got to, what's happening. We could be uh, in for a, for a long night. There's a there's a new cert petition that was filed um, later on in the day. Um, we we all know about the stay of execution that's in place from the district court and from the Fifth Circuit. Uh, there is now um, an appeal by um, by Jedediah Murphy's lawyers uh, of the state court's denial of his claim that it's unconstitutional to execute him with drugs that may have been damaged uh, in a fire in the prison. So um, on, on the first issue, uh, all the briefing is completed and it's with the court. Uh, and that's the, uh, I think that's the issue that uh, the prison was hoping would be resolved by 5.30 central time. Um, that issue is, um, it, it, it comes, it arises in a unique procedural posture. Uh, traditionally, uh, if a, if an issue is pending before a court, uh, the court will hold any other case that presents the same issue. Uh, and when an issue is pending before the United States Supreme Court, uh, and a death row prisoner raises that same issue, they will hold the death row prisoner's case pending resolution of that issue. Well, here uh, in, uh, in Mr. Murphy's case, uh, there is a question about Texas's denial of access to DNA testing. Uh, and Texas has a provision uh, in its law that allows for DNA testing in the post-conviction uh, in, in the post-conviction posture of a case, uh, which is uh, after the uh, original trial is done and after the uh, original appeal is done. Um, but Texas law then limits, ostensibly limits the availability of DNA testing to cases in which it could prove actual innocence. Uh, in Mr. Murphy's case, there's not a question about whether he committed the murder but there are questions about the validity of the arguments that the prosecution made that he would pose a future danger. Uh, and those are the things, if you saw uh, the TikTok with, uh, with Curry Blakinger, uh, those are uh, issues related to a prior kidnapping, uh, an alleged kidnapping, uh, and, uh, and a violent assault. Uh, and uh, he wanted to get DNA testing because one, he was never charged with those. And there is a reason. The reason is he didn't do them. Uh, and so the DNA testing of the weapons that were used in that case and the evidence in, in those cases uh, would exonerate him of those, um, those acts that the prosecution used to prove future dangerousness. Uh, that's important. Uh, and it raises an interesting um, side claim of innocence because Rob, is, yes uh, we're seeing notes in the chat here from jedediah's sister um that I, I don't see anything on the orders page yet but she is saying that um that the supreme court vacated the stay okay well that's not a surprise with this particular court um but the uh, um the the problem with Texas's rule um, is that once you allow for um, for a particular, once you allow for DNA testing, uh, is it a due process violation if you then disallow it uh, on issues of sentencing? And that issue is pending before the Fifth Circuit, and the stay that was granted was to um, hold his case until that other case was resolved. If it had been up in the U.S. Supreme Court, then there'd be no question that he would have gotten a stay. And this appears to be another instance of the U.S. Supreme Court saying we don't care if there are significant issues that other courts are in the process of trying to resolve. Uh, we are just going to go ahead and rubber stamp uh, executions. 
Uh, there's not been a stay of execution granted by this court since the death of Justice Ginsburg, uh, except in questions of whether a religious advisor can be present at the execution and the circumstances in which uh, that religious advisor can provide spiritual assistance. So um, that's that was that issue. The second cert petition that was filed or the, the second petition that that had been pending before the court, and I don't know if that's been resolved yet, uh, was the issue of whether um, it was unconstitutional to execute him with drugs that may have been damaged uh, in uh, in a fire. Uh, and um, uh, I was just in the process of reading that brief. Uh, I don't know what the uh, what the court has done uh, on that. Uh, but they the the lower court, the state courts denied um, denied Mr. Murphy an evidentiary hearing where he could attempt to produce evidence that would show that the drugs are contaminated or adulterated or damaged or whatever. Uh, and then um, after uh, after denying him the evidentiary hearing, uh, they denied a separate claim that he made uh, on the grounds that he had failed to produce evidence that the drugs were damaged. So first they denied him the means of proving it, uh, and then they used the absence of that proof to deny the rest of his claim. So that's where we are with the legal issues in the case. Okay, well, thank you, Rob. And I, and, you know, let's see, uh, Rabbi Goldstein. I saw that was your message to us in the. Uh, so you're with with Tanya. No, um, so Rabbi Yudi Eber, um, so Jedediah wanted him to be in the room, not in the execution room, but in that other room, and he's been waiting. He's been waiting for word what he should do or he shouldn't do. So we are all thinking that everything, because statistically we were told that the court doesn't want to weigh in. And the sister just texted him that the court vacated the stay. And we have, Rob, do you have any way of seeing that? Because um, it's not coming up on my refreshing of the order screen. But I don't, I don't. Uh, not believe it, but it's just it's just so sad. I, 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 I hope it's false. Yeah, I it's want it to be false. There's nothing that shows up um, on the on the Supreme Court docket, uh, and there's nothing that shows up on the miscellaneous orders. Uh, I'm currently checking to see uh, if uh, if there are opinions because it might show up as opinions related to orders, uh, and um, there. There was one opinion related to an order earlier today, but there is nothing yet uh, on the docket relating to this case. Okay, well, it's you know, as soon as we get more information, of course, whoever finds it, bring it forward. But uh, Shavas is here with his. Um, uh, uh, looks like you've frozen again, brother. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is your camera working, Shavas? There you go. You got to unmute though. Okay, now you're unmuted. Go ahead. Uh, Brother, it's really, really choppy. Okay. Maybe if you turn off your camera and just go with the audio, I could hear you. All right, well, let's take a pause here and um, have another song. Let's out of the label. Let's have you just switch over to here. And um, let's see here. All right. Go ahead. I'm broken, I'm fading It feels like I cut the lifeline From my heart to my soul It's just this day that hurts It hurts like cold wind on dry skin Love 
know A list of things to change now Reminders, revivals Unresolved debts that we learn to live with Cause we've learned that we can live without About the life that we let slip away Thoughts of tomorrow When all that we have is today I'm broken, I'm fading Feels like I cut the lifeline From my heart to my soul It's just this day of waiting that hurts It hurts like cold wind on my skin I'm broken, I'm fading, I'm broken, yeah I'm broken, so tired of waiting, I'm broken, yeah I'm broken, I'm fading, I'm broken, yeah So broken and Tired of waiting, yeah, I'm broken, yeah. Thank you, Brandon, for giving us that pause here. Um, we've got a couple of new guests here. Uh, Rob, is there any update? They got on mute. Okay, um, I I checked uh, on the docket. Um, there's still nothing that shows up uh, in the uh, in in the public docket. Uh, and with respect to the cert petition, there's an application for um, for review of the Texas court's uh, denial of. Uh, Mr. Murphy's claim relating to the lethal injection drugs, and there's an application for stay of execution that has been filed in connection with that. Uh, there's nothing on the docket indicating that Texas has yet responded to that. So if the execution is lifted, I'm sorry, if the stay of execution is vacated, uh, then um, we'll see if the circuit justice, um, who I believe is Justice Alito, uh, will grant a temporary stay so that the Supreme Court uh, can resolve the cert petition. Um, don't know how that um, don't know how that will turn out, uh, but traditionally um, the court will grant a temporary stay to allow the full court. The circuit justice will grant a temporary stay to allow the full court to rule, um, and that stay uh, will remain in effect until the full court decides. Uh, that that usually happens unless the state agrees not to do anything um, while the court is trying to reach a decision. So um, that that's a relatively recent filing. Uh, I don't know what um, I don't know how that will affect uh, what happens tonight. Uh, David in the chat just posted a link to the to the document, um, the order in the case. Um, but the application to vacate the stay is granted. Of course, this is a, an application from the side that wants to kill him. So granting the stay in this case is um, is not good. Um, 
Wow. Yeah, what's notable here uh, is it, it's a it's a six to three order. Uh, so all of the um, uh, conservative and far right justices uh, voted to vacate the stay. Um, that tells us something about uh, Chief Justice Roberts and um, uh, and Justice Kavanaugh, uh, who were considered to have more respect for um, uh, for court procedure uh, and for access to the courts, uh, but apparently that does not translate into death penalty cases. Wow. So, um, Shavas, can you hear me? Can you? Um, because now we can turn to the prison and know, you know, for those of you who have never been through one of these before with us in Texas, the way the setup is, if you remember the picture when we saw Shavas on him, the prison was right behind him. There was a road that goes down in front of the prison. On the other side of that is the prison administration building. And the folks that are outside the prison can see when the witnesses cross the street and go into the prison. And that is typically the answer to the question, is it going to happen? Um, so I guess we'll uh, hopefully be able to check in. Uh, and maybe if somebody here can, um, who's on can check and see what is happening on the prison show, which is also live streaming from that uh, that phase. So you can find the prison show on Facebook. Um, just call it the prison show and see what they're talking about over there. See if anybody there can say Anything. I want to introduce David Rose, who's here from the Jewish Chronicle in, in, in England. The old, I think it's the oldest Jewish newspaper in the country and in, in the world. Is that right, David? Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's the oldest Jewish, Jewish newspaper in the world. It's 181 years old. Wow. And, and you have been writing about this case. So I want to just give you a moment to uh, share a little bit about what captured your imagination about this case and, and what was um you know anything you'd like to share about the in this moment we've got i don't know a few dozen people from around the world are are listening and more people are watching on social media well I, i've written um a great deal about the death penalty um over many years um i wrote a book which was published in 2007 about um a, a man in georgia Carlton Gary, who was convicted as a serial killer, an African-American convicted of raping and murdering seven elderly white women in the city of Columbus, Georgia. And as well as being uh, the writer of the book, um, I also became the investigator for his attorneys. And I dug up a lot of evidence that um, suggested he was not guilty of these crimes, including eventually um, evidence that the state had been hiding DNA samples, semen samples taken from the crime scenes from the victims, uh, which it had claimed falsely under oath in court um, at the state habeas proceedings. Um, it claimed that they had been destroyed because they constituted a biohazard. And in fact, this was just untrue. It was a lie. Um, anyway, it was a very long and involved process. I was involved with the case for nearly 20 years. And um, uh, eventually, despite the fact that uh, a DNA test uh, exonerated him. Carlton was executed in 2018. Um, so the, the issue of the death penalty is close to my heart. It's also very close to my wife's heart. Um, she is the, uh, pro she's a professor of law at the University of Oxford, where we live in Oxford. And, and she's the director of, of something called the Death Penalty Research Unit, which is primarily concerned not with the death penalty in the United States, but in other jurisdictions in Africa and Asia. Um, so um, it's a kind of family business. So I discovered that um, Jedediah was scheduled to die um, uh, about six weeks ago and was immediately captivated the more I found out about the case. And it became very clear that his sentencing hearing, his punishment, the punishment phase of his trial was was, was um, based on deeply flawed, indeed, um, uh, bogus uh false evidence and so I, I think i've now written about four articles for the paper and its website and and it's attracted a lot of attention from readers um uh, i'm i'm devastated to hear that the supreme court seems to have vacated the stay of execution uh, I, I won't be able to stay on this vigil all, all evening because it's, it's nearly midnight here and i'm actually very much involved with coverage of the um current atrocities in israel and um and the political fallout from that in here in the uk so 
I'll, I'll have to get to bed soon, but um, this is obviously terrible news, and I'm very, very sad to hear it. Well, of course, we're just grateful for the writing that you've done. You, you, you've done some, you are one of the people that really wrote significantly about this case. There's not been a lot written until very recently, so thank you for that. And um, I'm just grateful that you were able to make the time to jump on with us. Um, we're looking, looks like Ali is putting some links to your writing there. And of course, if you go to um, org and click on the, the thing to read the news items, then you'll be able to see all of the articles that we've gathered over the last uh, six or eight weeks, um, which are not that many, but they're significant. And, and, and a lot of the Jewish media has, has, has leaned in here. Um, you know, so we're five minutes from execution time. And normally, if we know this is going to happen, we shift into a more prayerful mode here. We've we've heard a lot of information and 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 we're really grateful, especially to have um learned firsthand about Jedediah's last couple of days. Um and I guess uh you know, we just don't know exactly what's happening. Uh, Shavas, are you able to hear me? Has anybody able, been able to check in on the prison show's uh, feed and see if they're talking what they're talking about there? Yes, guy. Um, so I just checked in on the prison show, but there was no sir or there was bad connection and nobody could hear, so they ended it. So I'm sure it'll be back on in the next few minutes. Yeah, there must be some bad weather happening in in Huntsville that's interfering with the with that. So, um, you know. Uh, for a moment here, Janet, why don't why don't we just go to you now and 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 hear the prayer that you are, are ready to to give? And again, I want to make sure our Jewish friends know that we're multi faith here, and and we're going to hear from a variety of perspectives tonight. And and this is Janet Walsh from the UK. Hi, um, everyone. Uh, another another sad evening. Uh, so my name is uh, Janet Walsh uh, and I'm a Christian believer. I live near Manchester in the UK uh, and here in the UK, the last executions were carried out back in 1964 and the death penalty was completely abolished in 1969, over 50 years ago. And I'm standing here with you all as you campaign to abolish the death penalty in Texas and to try to save the lives of those condemned to death and especially today for Jedediah Murphy. And this is my prayer for Jedediah. It says in Psalm 150, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And I come before you, O God, praising you in your sanctuary and in your mighty heavens. I praise you for acts of power and for your surpassing greatness. And I lift Jedediah up to you right now. May he know your steadfast love, O O oh God, as he puts his hope and trust in you, fill him with your perfect peace, I pray, and set him free from fear. And I pray for a miracle, that there will be no ex execution in Texas today. I want to pray for Governor Abbott too, that one day his heart will be filled with compassion for all those on death row and that the desire for vengeance by the Texan judiciary will be no more. As it says in God's word, do not repay evil with evil, but with blessing. I pray that those who have done a terrible wrong can be blessed with a second chance and that today, Governor Abbott, you will give a second chance to Jedediah. And for all those who continue to campaign tirelessly for the abolition of the death penalty, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And I offer up all these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, Shavai, it's uh, once again, your, your video seems to have gone out. But, um... There you are. Shivas, can you hear me? Oh, 
I don't know that Rob Dunham uh, had to go. There's another program in Israel day against the death penalty, of course, and there's lots of different live things happening as we, as this is. Um, so, Shivas, can you hear me? All right. I think he's gone again. Oh no, he's back. Having done these things on the fly quite a bit. There we are. Shivas, can you hear? I just got a breaking news text that I just sent to you. Ah. Our word is only it's one stay was vacated, and that being the lower court or district court. So they have not ruled on the Fifth Circuit stay. So we're telling Jedediah now, and as of, so this is, this is, a, it, this is good news. This is a text that, that. Um, uh, I received this from the head chaplain of the state of Texas, Mr. Okay. Hazel. We'll go with that. So we're telling Jedediah now, as of now, he has a state that has not been vacated. So we're in, in um, a bit of a relief. Um, thank you. Shivas, can you hear me? Are you ready, boss? Okay, um, you know, one of these days we'll we'll have our, our full time crew on site. Uh, often, some of us from our staff uh, travel. We weren't unable to do that this time. Um, Rabbi Goldstein, you know, and and you know, I want to share. Also, I've got all these international people here. Um, you know, it's World Day Against the Death Penalty. The World Coalition to uh, Against the Death Penalty has published a report about torture and the death penalty. And I think that, that there could be no more of a prime example about the torture that, that, that is being visited. You know, Amnesty International has called death row itself torture, right? And, uh, and, and I know earlier today, uh, uh, Mike and I both received an email from, from Jedediah saying how um, he was excited because somebody told him that you know, with the Fifth Circuit upholding the stay, it seemed unlikely that anything was going to happen and he was going to get to see tomorrow. And then 20 minutes later, another email saying, hey, it's going to go down to the wire. And this is not new for us going down to the wire. We have been on these Zooms sometimes as long as seven hours, um, especially with regard to Alabama. So, you know, we're in it for the long haul. Hopefully we get good news very soon. Um, and especially if it's the Fifth Circuit stay that has not been answered yet, then what that really means is that they're, um, well, I, I can't tell you what it means. I'm not a lawyer, but I will say that that uh, that's the one that we should be hanging our hat on. And uh, i give you another shout out. Uh, Shavas, can you hear me now? Can you unmute and see if we get it working? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, brother? The Western yes. District. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, oh, everybody, forgive me. I had to good. switch devices. Yeah. We got a lot of. Uh, Take your people. I'm trying to. We got a lot of bandwidth out here being, you know, crossed over. Uh, my name is Chevis. Chevis Watson. Um, I could tell you a bunch of labels, but it doesn't matter. I'm simply here as a as a two time felon, um, a former parolee, who um, since I was a young kid and, and could spell abolition, I've been an abolitionist. Um, I'm a friend to, to, to the movement. I'm an ally to the movement. I'm a co-conspirator to the movement and I support letting everybody, letting everybody off. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what they've done. I want to be able to look my brothers in the face and tell them, forgive yourself. But I know guys like Jedediah have, have forgiven themselves has repented for his sins and has changed his life for the better. And we've got so many more. We've got so many more. Uh, Tonya, uh, we're out here with Ray, Jedediah's brother. And we've got, we've got a quite, quite a few supporters out here in the name of the of, of world day against the death penalty. And it's sad that we have to, 
We have to come to things like this. It's sad that we have to have anxiety here at 6 o'clock, 6.04 p.m. Uh, because news of a vacated stay, but 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 God is is real and God is working. So I'm, I, I'm glad to hear about the other news, about the other stay. And that the fifth, the fifth circuits hasn't been, you know, hasn't been addressed. We're here holding on hope for Jedediah. I'm sweating under my shirt um, as, as somebody who did time here um, at the at the Huntsville unit. Uh, this is this is traumatic every time I have to come back. But uh, coming back in the name of justice with my DPA shirt on, don't kill for me. Don't kill for me. I don't want you to kill for me. I don't want I don't want any more killing. Amen. I don't want any more murders. Amen. Amen. Shut us. Hey, can, can you give us we can handle can you, this thing differently? Yeah, okay. yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to ask if you could just show us what's going on behind you and, and give yeah, us a absolutely. And so you see, you see, we've got uh, a bunch of people are telling you hi, Gloria. Oh, hi, a bunch of folks. I'm going to rotate my screen. Crazy earth. Crazy earth. Seems like we're going to be in for a, a long night. Right, right, all right. Man, you however long it takes. Kicking my water. Right. Of course, we got the Zinda. We got the Zinda. I just wish that there was Danny. Hey. Good boy. Got a brother here in support all the way from Sweden. Let me you were from Sweden. Yeah, I'm from Sweden. Yeah, from Sweden. So your camera is frozen up again. Travis, your, your camera is frozen up. Can you still hear me? You live here in Huntsville? Uh, just outside of Huntsville. Yeah. Yeah. Just outside of. But I do not support this. No, I understand. I thought you were the only one. All right. So, Travis, we'll come back to you. Hey. Um. But you can see, you know, there's a small but but mighty crowd there at the outside of the prison in Huntsville, Texas, and they, they're, hopefully it's not going to rain on them anymore. Um, and they were just saying they must have heard something that made them that made Gloria say that it looks like we're in for a long night. So we'll see what we get. Um, Allie, did you have something to add? Um, no, I mean, I think I say something similar most days, but these days where there's executions are, I mean, hanging, how do I, I can't talk right now. Um, I don't know. I was just struck by something that Rabbi Gordon wrote in the chat. And um, he said, imagine decisions about your life are hanging in the balance of people who have never met you deciding your fate, the mystery of the unknown. and. I mean, I think we had part of this discussion this morning when Jeff and I had our book talk, but I think that is part of what makes this experience so unique and so traumatizing and just so disgusting um, because most of these people that are deciding everything about what's going to happen to you, don't know you, have never met you, don't really know anything of, about your case. It's a miracle if they even read the documents that, that are submitted to them um thoroughly and thoughtfully and it it's just really disturbing that we're just going to keep killing people like this and I said this when Arthur Brown was executed and I think that it remains true um when I was interviewed by a couple of news stations I basically said that if um Governor Abbott goes to death row and meets all the men on the row and gets to know them and not just um like not just hears everything that are said about them in the media, in the courts, by the state, because um, there is always much more to the story than what the state is saying and what the media often says. Um, but if people like Governor Abbott, the Pardon and Parole Board, these justices and judges that are making all these decisions actually go and get to know the guys, get to understand them, get to see how similar they are to the people on death row and we're not all that removed from them. We are just like them. They are just like us. They experience similar things that we've experienced. And oftentimes they've experienced much more traumatic things than many of us have experienced. And 
I think if, if everybody that makes these decisions actually makes them not blindly, because if you don't know the person, you don't have feelings about them, you can make these decisions and move on and it doesn't really affect you. And, but it affects all the people around them. And I don't know, I don't know if this is ever going to happen. It is just my wish that the people that are making these decisions actually get to go meet Jedediah, know Jedediah, meet Randy, meet all the other guys on death row and see that they're still worthy of life. Thank you, Ali. That's, um, that's what we needed to hear. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just sitting around, uh, poking around, looking at, again, refreshing the Supreme Court docket, um, looking for some other sources here. Um, let's see, Reverend Dr. Jeff Hood has joined us. And Jeff, if you wanted to um, bring some thoughts at this point, um, I would welcome that. Yeah, thank you. Um, I guess I saw uh, that the stay has been vacated. Well, a stay. The the, the one about the the drugs issue has been, I guess, or but the 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 one that's before the Fifth Circuit or that was upheld by the Fifth Circuit is still uh, still pending. So, uh, uh, for those who don't know, Reverend Dr. Jeff Hurt, he's uh, uh, also does. Um, prison ministry and accompaniment to people. He's been in death chambers three times this year in court in there in Texas. Uh, so I just wanted to introduce you a little bit further, but we're still in a holding pattern, Jeff. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you. I, uh, if you hear uh, a little bit of music in the background, I, uh, I apologize. Although I guess music could be uh, beneficial for um, times like this, but uh, I'm at a function with my family and you know, when I think about uh, this moment, what Jedediah is going through and um, not just Jedediah, but what all of those around him are going through. I think about, um, um, you know, March, the uh, execution of Arthur Brown and what it looked like to sit in that little bitty space in that little cell and to talk back and forth with Arthur in that cell and even more than that, what it looked like to go into um, that execution chamber and that space that is, um, you know, the dungeon that is under the walls unit where the execution chamber is. You know, I think this is particularly poignant uh, tonight as we. Um, think about what it means that someone um, of the Jewish faith is uh, up for execution tonight. I mean, you know, we know that these executions, lethal injection, um, come out of the horrors of the Holocaust. And I can tell you that the death chamber in Huntsville is the setting is like something out of some crazy scientific uh, experimental space um, that represents the worst of humanity, just like the Holocaust. As we think about that, though, we also have to think about where do we go from here? You know, I told someone tonight that uh, they were asking, um, you know, just about a couple of weeks ago when Anthony Sanchez was executed and what was it like being there in the chamber and the conversations and whatnot. And I said that the most difficult thing um, about that moment, you know, certainly it was horrific to lose a friend. Certainly, it was horrific to, um, you know, see the hurt from his family. But I think one of the most uh, difficult things that I experienced is right after it happens, you look up and you see the people that just killed him. 
and you realize that if you don't love them, if you don't find a way to them, it will happen again. Oh, amen to that. You know, Rabbi Goldstein was sharing with us that, you know, he's hearing and, and experiencing people in the prison. Um, and we've seen this, you know, a number of people have left their jobs in in in, in prison management and joined the anti-death penalty movement. Um, not suggesting that that's what's happening here, but certainly it's a different tone than what is expected. Um, so, you know, I know that, the, um, well, Anything more you want to add? I see uh, Gabby is here from Germany, and you know, I want to give her a chance to share. And we we'll come back to you, Jeff, if you if you like. Yeah, I can I can come on later, but I just uh, also wanted to conclude this thought by saying that uh, um, you know, it's I think it's something that we all share, and I mean, obviously, I'm a Christian minister, um, rabbis, and moms. I think the best of our faiths always teach us that love for our enemy um, is salvific and i hope that tonight as we um, think about what could happen engage what does happen think about what might happen in the future that we remember it is our enemies that uh, offer us salvation okay uh thank you jeff uh Gabby is here from Germany with the German Coalition to abolish the death penalty and wanted to, again, before it gets too late for you, um, you know, recognizing it's World Day Against the Death Penalty and you're a regular with us, but wanted to give you an opportunity to, to bring a message as well. Yeah, thank you very much for having me today. It's a very special day, of course, the World Day Against the Death Penalty. Um, and it's more than cruel that uh, we have to be here again um, today. And um, I think the, um, the focus of the, the World Day um, concerning torture, uh, that fits exactly to what... Um, we and especially Jedediah is, is experiencing now, um, not knowing what is going to happen. Um, I just can't imagine how cruel it must um, be for him. Um, I was reminded today um, of um, an execution which um, was in 2014 and I witnessed it because it was a pen pal of mine. And um, I experienced um, especially his son, um, how difficult it was for him, how tortured he was um, by losing his father. Um, the crime um, resulted in losing his mother and um, finally he lost his fa father at well, as well. And uh, yeah. That was pretty hard. Um, I was today at a vigil in Frankfurt. Um, I was invited uh, there with, together with many other groups. And uh, um, I told them exactly about that. And I told them uh, 12 hours from now, um, Jedediah Murphy is um, supposed to be executed uh, in Texas. And uh, so um, he was in our thoughts as well over here in Germany. Thank you. Um, you know, I want to invite questions and comments in the chat. And I also want to ask uh, David if you want to come back and maybe share a little bit more about your um, experiences with Jedediah. I was hoping to ask you that earlier, and you know we had to get through a few of the other folks, but now we've got a little bit of time, it would seem. So if you are available, and you know, because you've been working with Jedediah for so long, Rabbi Goldstein may be 
a little bit busy. Um, let's pause for another song. Brandon, you got sure. something for yeah. us? Regardless of the evil brought against you, do not retaliate, do what is right. Regardless of the evil brought against you, do not retaliate. Do what is good and live in peace, live in peace, live in peace, live in peace, in peace with everyone. My beloved, leave it to God, who is just and will settle all scores. Beloved, leave it in the hands of God, who is just and We'll settle all scores and live in peace, live in peace, live in peace, live in peace, live in peace with everyone. be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good And if your enemy is hungry, feed them If thirsty, give them a drink You will soften the hardest hearts And lead them to life So live in peace Live in peace Live in peace, live in peace with everyone. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with Brandon, stepping over the dog here. And, um, you know, usually Brandon is in his house over in Illinois, but he was here today in Columbus, Ohio, uh, to help bring music and and um, spiritual guidance to us here at the overnight vigil, twenty four hour vigil that was done at the state capitol here. Um, in Columbus, Ohio, where tomorrow there's actually a first proponent testimony 
um, in our bill to abolish the death penalty in Ohio, which is super exciting mm -hmm. um, because it's looking really good. We'll see what happens. I'm but um, I'm going to take off now. Okay. Thank you. And Brandon is going to say goodnight. He's got to drive back to Illinois. Thank you, brother. Yeah, thank um, you. I'm going to come in one moment. We'll just yeah. give you a quick hug here. <laughs> Hold on. All right, lovely. Yeah. So that's um that's our situation. I see a note here from Andrew asking if he's lurking or visible. And Andrew, you're in the audience, so don't worry about it. Um and oh boy. Let's see. Shavas, is there anything new from the prison? And I see Edward is here. Uh, Edward, are you on site there in San Antonio? You might still just be getting set up, but um, there is, there's a program going on in San Antonio. There's a vigil going on in Dallas. There's a vigil going on probably in a few other places. Let me see what's going on. My phone's going, oh, it's, it's Katra Zeusman just checking in here. Um, so. This is one of those moments, you know, we haven't had a delay like this in Texas in quite some time. And often we have a much bigger panel, but again, because there's so many events going on tonight at the same time, um, there's a national Christian prayer call that's happening. Several of the people that are usually with us are on that call. Uh, and, and then there's uh, other events happening too. So um, let's get back before we lose you, David Rose in, in um, is it Oxford that you're at? I'm actually in in Liverpool. I'm in the uh, I've been at the um, uh, annual conference of the Labour Party, the main opposition party in the UK, which is quite likely to win the next election here, which is due probably in the next uh, year or so. Um, I, I ought to go soon because I, I have a very big working day tomorrow, though I'm finding it very hard to conceive of the possibility of going to sleep. But I want to make a, an observation. What I find so depressing about this case is that the argument that the state is making, all the arguments that the state is making are essentially procedural. There's no regard for justice here. There's no uh, attempt to refute the argument made by um, Jedediah's lawyers and supporters that his sentencing, his punishment phase was based on completely false evidence indeed lies told by a police officer um as many of you will know um the um the basis of, on which he was sentenced to death is that he was likely to be so dangerous even in a penitentiary if allowed to live that he would be a continuing threat to society this is this is the what texas law requires the uh, jury to decide uh, to a standard of proof beyond reasonable doubt. And the way the state made that claim was that he had committed this carjacking three years before the murder that he did commit, um, even though he'd never been investigated for this crime, he'd never been charged with it, much less convicted by a court. But at his the punishment phase of his trial, it was said that he had committed this crime. Um, and um, there were in fact fingerprints found uh, on the vehicle that was stolen in that prior offense. Uh, and as the um, police officer who gave uh, evidence, who testified in the punishment phase, uh, he, he knew full well that, the, that these fingerprints had been found, that they had tried to match them uh, to Jedediah's and no match was found. But he, he, he misled the court. He said that um, there were no clear fingerprints that could be compared. And now it turns out there were also, you know, fluids that may have carried the DNA of the perpetrator. And, and of course, that's why that was the basis of, 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 of the original stay last week. But there's no attempt to confront these, these, these facts. There's no attempt to say, well, you know, maybe these fingerprints did match after all. So what? How do you know these fingerprints belong to the perpetrator? There's nothing like that. It's just, well, this should have been raised before. These issues are time barred. And, you know, this happens in so many death penalty cases, as I'm sure many of you or most of you know. But, you know, this is not justice. This is, this is just 
uh, an attempt to use legal verbiage to cover up what amounts to um, uh, state-sponsored murder. And, you know, it is just so depressing that uh, an advanced country like the United States, Texas, a prosperous state, which is part of that, can still operate to that standard. Um, and um, it's just a wretched situation. Huh, well, you know, it, it, it's just so, I mean, we're, we kind of get used to it. That's, I mean, that's one of the things we've seen consistently this year, especially is, um, and not, not in this case, but in others where um, uh, people with legitimate evidence that should be heard in court are procedurally barred from bringing that evidence in front of a court because it's too late because they've already missed the deadline. Um, Anthony Sanchez was a perfect example of that. We had newly developed evidence, new witnesses. Um, and because he was already had that appeal and he's already been denied that um, there was no way to bring new information forward uh, and, and he was denied. And, uh, and we've seen that. We saw that with Arthur Brown. We saw that with, um, um, Bobby Frada, uh, we saw that with Raheem Taylor, we saw that with another man, uh, forget his name uh, for the moment here, who had a case where it turned out that the jury foreperson was, in a, was using racist language during the trial, and that should have been heard because maybe that skewed how the decision was made. You know, all of these things, um, and as Rob was mentioning earlier, um, you know, we've got six... So six conservative and right-wing Supreme Court justices that just don't seem to care about the facts. They just want to move and expedite things forward, and that's what they do. And we're hoping that there'll be a shift on that tonight. We're, the hope is coming in, in large part because the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, while there was a dissent, that was pretty ridiculous in itself. <laughs> I mean, it, it was pretty stunning, I think, to some people that the, the judge who dissented actually wrote the order he wanted to have, um, the order he wanted to have them uh, affirming, and it, it was not their order, right? So, you know, David, this is something that, you know, we need more writing about. Um, maybe, uh, you know, well, I'm just grateful that you found this case and had the wherewithal to be able to write about it, both from a, a Jewish perspective and also from, I see uh, uh, Rabbi Goldstein, go ahead. I have a few updates. So I've been off because I've been off because I've been speaking. I spoke to Mr. Hazelwood and I spoke to Jedediah's sister. And there's a lot of confusion going on. And I just want to clarify, the sister was told by the by Jedediah's attorney that everything was vacated and the only thing that they haven't ruled on is about the smoke the, the thing about the smoke but I just got off the phone with a head chaplain who spoke to the attorney general and they said no the fifth circuit state is still on the table and he said that uh, he just spent time with Jedediah and Jedediah has message to everybody is that he doesn't like being in the roller coaster but at this point, he feels empowered, and uh, if if he if God wants him, he's ready to meet God, and if God wants him to stay, he's ready to stay. He's very at peace. He's not crying, but he's very he's very very calm. That's a beautiful thing to hear. That and 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 it must be. You know, I wanted to ask you while you were um, away, just more for you to, to reflect a bit more about your relationship with Jedediah, and that really sort of says it all. Um, what kind of person he is? It's the sort that's the sort of person that I've experienced in you know the brief couple of months that we've been working with him. You know, Vivian, his wife, and uh, and Jedediah came to Death Part of the Action and asked us to help him build a web page. At that point in the middle of the summer, he still didn't have an attorney. Luckily, he got Catherine Black, who's one of the best, and she's been, you know, really pushing it as, be as, as best she could. And, um, and, and, you know, that's the thing. In today's capital punishment arena, it actually doesn't really matter, it seems, how good your attorney is or how bad 
the courts are sort of stacked against you. And yet here we are in a moment where we're keeping hope alive and Jedediah is keeping hope alive. Um, and, and hopefully he gets to see the morning. So one, the only interesting thing, first of all, is like this. So officially, I have to be impartial or non-biased, and so does the head chaplain. But both he and I are definitely against this. And um, and he said, you know, if you could tell the sister to tell the attorney, all the attorney has to do is just keep on filing papers and, and, and creating just uh, delays because... Legally, if it goes past eleven o'clock sharp tonight, they cannot execute him today. They can, they have to they have to just do a whole different procedure. The warrant expires, and uh, he says because that's that's you know that's the deal. So that's five and a half hours from now. Um, if, I, if, if I'm doing my math, so right. I told the sister, I said, please, if, if tell the lawyer right now that she has to file a paper about anti-Semitism that, that they did this against him because he's Jewish and just, just stuff the, the line man with paper. So that's, that's, well, uh, you know, you have to wonder if there is some truth to that anyway. Um, but, you know, having, having said that, I, I, I want to know, we haven't heard any such allegations, but it's, it's, you know, racism exists in the system and the system itself is racist. And we've already seen with the case of Randy Halpern um, that there was actual anti-Semitism in, in that case. Um, so, wow. Uh, you know, so just so everybody's clear, you actually work for TDCJ, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, as a, as a, um, as a Jewish chaplain. Uh, am I right in that? So basically the way it works here in the state of Texas is so I'm not a full-time employee. I'm what they call a contract rabbi, which was what we wanted. Um, and I oversee the all, all the Jews in the whole state of Texas prison system. So the official title is called lead consulting rabbi. So I write the Jewish policies for the state. We created a rehabilitation through Judaism program in one of the units. There's a kosher kitchen there and relocated there's uh, roughly 80 Jews in the whole prison system, and we've relocated almost all 80 of them to like five units in the Houston region so to be so able to serve. Get a, a minion guard in each place. Well, we actually, so in the main one that has uh, that has the biggest um, in a population, oh. so we even bring Bachrim, rabbinical students down for Yom Kippur, and they sleep in a RV outside of the prison, and they lead services there, and it's a really, we've done a lot of good rehabilitative work there and in at, at, at the prison. And, and the state is changing over there. I've been involved for 25 years with TDC and, and, and it's changing. It's becoming much more um, rehabilitation uh, oriented. Well, that's great news. That's great news. And it's beautiful to have someone such as yourself in the system such that you are and that you've been able to consolidate. I mean, I, I would have think, I mean, I don't know how many prisons, prisoners are in the Texas system. It must be over 100,000, but um, I don't know. There's 150,000 inmates. Yeah. So out of that, only 80 Jews is, I, I guess I'm kind of proud of that, but as a Jew, but, um, but the, you know, we got plenty of, 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 um, of people that run awry of the law ourselves. And, um, but in any case, um, you know, so, so how did, so you became Jedediah's main contact or has he got other rabbis that he's working with too? So there's a, so I'm the rabbi that is, is like chaplain via the state. He has another rabbi that is a pen pal of his named uh, named Rabbi Yehuda Eber, um, who lives in New York. And they're a pen pal. So he, it's very difficult for me to have very focused relationships one-on-one -on -one for a long amount of time because of the vast work in the system. So I visit Jedid, I visit him a total of five times so far. I didn't learn about Jedediah as the head rabbi and, and at his Jewish uh, roots until about roughly, I believe the first time I saw him was maybe 2014, perhaps, around then. And um, the first time I met him, he, he said he really wanted to put on those tefillin, those phylacteries, and the state wouldn't let me bring it to him. 
And so then I, I have a lot of connections. And so I fought a lot with the state. And then immediately they allowed me to 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 bring the tefillin. And that was the next visit, which you see a picture of there. And I had to, did a bar mitzvah with him. Um, because in the Orthodox faith, we believe the first time you put on the tefillin is considered a bar mitzvah. So whereas many bar mitzvahs have catered meals and whatnot, his bar mitzvah consisted of potato chips and soda from the machine. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> from, uh, from the back snack machine. So we said L'chaim together, and it was a real, a, b- a beautiful event. And um, ever since then, we've been continuously sending him the, um, uh, uh, sorry, I've been continuously sending him whatever he needs for all the different holidays, like Passover and Rosh Hashanah, Hanukkah, etc. And uh, just making sure that he has access to everything he needs to have access for. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So, um, for those who don't know, a bar mitzvah is a kind of a coming of age. You, you become uh, obligated as a as a Jewish adult when you have your bar mitzvah, and um, and there's, I'm sure much more you might want to say about that. But it's just trying to make sure we're letting people know that for whom this is all new information. Um, but but it's also a very rare thing to have uh, somebody that's Jewish being executed. Um, or even on death row. It's not entirely rare. And hopefully, you know, Cantor Zussman is hopeful of joining us after 8 o'clock. Um, I think that's Eastern time, which is in about 20 minutes, um, whenever he finishes whatever his prior obligation. But, um, you know, he can tell us because he took it upon himself once he got in, involved to write to every Jewish prisoner on death row in the whole country, which is about 10 or 11 people and then also he's taken on also writing anybody that gets a death warrant regardless of their religion he reaches out to them so um so often you know he's very connected and as you could see from uh from when he shared uh his prayer for the victim family in this case and for the victim in this case he was a bit more emotionally stricken than he um, I mean, he's always engaged, but but this case means a lot more to him because he's been so close to Jedediah. So I'm gonna, I might, I'm not leaving, but I have to do a couple of things, do pray the mincha the afternoon service, and uh, but I'm by my phone, and the second I hear anything, get any update, I promise you, I'll chime in. Okay, thank you so much, Rabbi. Just looking. Uh, Shavas, can you hear us? Can we get a check in from the prison? Now, for those of you in the audience, uh, you know, especially if you're new, this is you know, one of those things that happens on occasion. Normally, not in Texas. Normally, in Texas, it's you know they they have their system down. They don't have problems carrying carrying out the execution, and it's usually very smooth, uh, and which is not a good thing, of course. But but they've got it down, and 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 normally. Um, you know, you can set your clock, you know, know that, you know, we'll be free in an hour or so after the execution time, uh, in terms of us being done with this programming. But it's also been the case over and over and over again, when it comes down to the wire with this, and we're waiting for the courts to make a final decision, uh, or something else gets in the way, as happens once in a while, then, you know, we get to keep the programming going and and, and just uh, and, and try to fill the space. And we've even come to the point sometimes where we just say we're going to take a break and we pause and we say check back in 20 minutes and we'll be back. Um, and we run some videos or something. Um, so we're looking into whether we need to do that. Uh, I also want to invite if there's any questions or comments that people want to make in the chat, if there's anything I can try to answer. I do want to say um you know we've uh from just checking with the uh yeah checking the, the chat here um i want to say that um you know i don't get personally engaged with most of the prisoners that are getting executed in fact uh, uh, i don't even know why it worked out this way but i never actually directly communicated with anthony sanchez um who we were very close to over the last nearly a year um, but I was able to communicate with him through Reverend Dr. Jeff Hood, his spiritual advisor, and we were on the phone almost every day as well. So I didn't feel the need. But with Jedediah, he reached out to us. Well, 
Cantra Zeusman reached out to him and then it became clear that they needed a web page and connected uh, Can um, Jedediah's wife Vivian with us um, and together we figured out how to make sure that the web page was what Jedediah was looking for and we built that for him. Um, we're able to do that sometimes and uh, and that's how I got connected with him. I wanted to make sure we had it right. I wanted to make sure that the questions that journalists and others had were being answered. So, you know, we've had a fair amount of, you know, not deep conversations, but enough to, to be able to recognize each other and to understand um, and, and commiserate, especially, you know, everybody uh, that I know may be hard for some people to understand, but everybody that is Jewish, you know, is feeling the attack on Israel not getting into the details of that today, but, but it's just, a, it feels different. And, um, and he was feeling that too, and reaching out and, and, and making sure that Mike and I'm sure Rabbi Goldstein and other people were, you know, feeling comforted. That's the thing about him is he, and if you read his message, his messages that Mike Zusman has shared, he's reaching out to make sure that other people are feeling comforted. The message he sent last night was all about how, you know, for him, he's going to go one way or the other. He's happy with what happens. He's okay with what happens, but he's upset with the roller coaster that his family and his lawyers and the people that love him have been on. And we see this over and over and over again. So Amanda is asking a question, is the case still with the U.S. Supreme Court? Yes. Um, and to be clear, there were two different cases. One has been, the stay has been denied. And the other one, well, I guess I'll just go and refresh my uh, screen here and just see what's going on with the docket. Uh, we're waiting for another order. Um, and we don't have it yet in, in the case that is... Uh, the one that we're waiting for is case number 23-70005. The order that we got was in case uh, 23CV1170. That's the one that the stay was vacated, and um, so that one's over. But we're still waiting for word on the case that was upheld by the Fifth Circuit. Um, Yeah, so answering Mike's question about the so the, the case the, the state that was thrown out was over the drugs. Um and, and the reason that the drugs were at issue this time is because a few weeks ago there was a really big fire at the Walls unit, at the Huntsville unit where the where the executions take place. And the suggestion by the legal team was, you know, are we sure that the integrity of the drugs has been maintained? Uh could they have been impacted by the heat and the smoke uh, did that impact that and of course the state is saying no that didn't have any impact um, and, and that's the case that's been thrown out the one that is still pending has to do with the evidence um, uh, uh, with, with, with the but well, it's technically a request for DNA testing but not related to Jedediah's case to back up one of the reasons why Jedediah is on death row and facing execution is because there was this thing called a, a question of future dangerousness. If we allow this person to live, will he be a future danger? And in order to uh, make a jury think that or a judge think that at the trial level, they introduced false evidence. They lied. Prosecutors and the police lied in the court to the judge and to the jury to say that, that he had done these other crimes. And the request is, I'm not sure how it would impact it, but I'm sure that there's something valid there because um, I wouldn't be asking for it if there wasn't. The question is, would DNA testing somehow impact this evidence in or maybe prove that Jedediah wasn't a part of that other crime? And we already know because he was never accused of that crime. He was never convicted of that crime. And therefore, it's illegal. It's unethical probably illegal to raise that and say to a jury, hey, yeah, he did these other things too, even though he was never convicted of them, but that's why he got put on death row. And that, and the, the idea here is that if they can prove 
that Jedediah was not part of the other crimes, then they can, uh, th then that's no longer a valid argument to have been made in court, and they should go back and give him a new sentencing hearing. And that's all Jedediah wants. He, you know, is, he doesn't deny that he did the crime that got him uh, arrested in the first place, the murder of Bertie Cunningham. He does not deny that. He doesn't remember it. He also talks a lot about, and if you go back and read his webpage, and if you go back and read the writing that's been done in this case, especially to uh, Kerry Bleckinger's new article in the LA Times today, or the stuff that David Rose wrote about, all of this, if you go to the webpage, save, uh, save Jedediah um, Murphy.org, and click on the news tab, then you'll be able to see the different articles. Um, and you can also see the op-ed that Mike Zussman and I had printed in the Haaretz newspaper in Israel on, um, on Monday. It was published. Um, Jared and I wanted to talk about his upbringing and how his mental health and how the abuse he suffered as a child in the Texas foster care system uh, impacted him. And essentially, he was in a, well, his father was very abusive to him. He was, and then in short order, he lost both grandparents and his father and his mother had abandoned him. That's how he and his brother ended up in the foster care system. And then in the first foster care situation, he was in an abusive space such that the state of Texas child welfare people took him out and put him with another, a different family. And there he was abused again. You have to ask, how is this a situation that is allowed to keep going? And, and we have to be deeply concerned about that. And that's part of the argument that Mike Zussman and I were making in our op-ed is, is um, the consistent thread that runs through all of these cases, not just Jedediah, but look at every single person that's been executed this year. And almost every one of them, I'm trying to think if there were any that where this wasn't the case, have some combination of abuse, neglect, their own drug or alcohol abuse. All these things are the consistent thread. And that's how, you know, David Dow has a really good, um, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, a, a TED Talk, David, attorney David Dow, where he talks about the corner where the pro and anti-death penalty people meet. What's the one place where we all agree? And what we all agree on is that there is no, that we prefer there's no murder at all. I see Edward is here. I'm going to add him into this mix here. Edward, you want to turn on your microphone? And um, let's see. Hey. Hey, Edward Murata. We, I met Edward at the execution of Bobby Frada. He was outside the prison there to protest, and today he's in San Antonio. He sent some pictures earlier uh, of, of the vigil that was held at the university earlier today. And um, and where are you now, Edward? Hmm. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Can you see me? Yes. Cool. Uh, first off, I want to say thanks for being allowing me to be here. I'm sorry we have to be here, but I'm glad we're here. And... <laughs> I am currently at the University of Incarnate Word in San Antonio, that is near downtown, and we are having um, an anti-death penalty um, thing here tonight. There's a lot of people, probably about 50 people in the room, I don't know if you can see it. Earlier today, we were downtown, we signed the, we signed the thing, we had a bunch of people, it was really nice, everyone's been really respectful, there's food here, we're all talking, and it's been, it's, you know, it's a lot of love in here, and a lot of people that care. So you're at the University of the Incarnate Word, and there's a program tonight about the death penalty. And, yes. And are you a student? Where, where are you? A... No, I'm not a student. I'm just an independent person that doesn't believe in the death penalty. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's, when I met you, I was just on my own. I just, I had to see it from my own eyes and put one and one together and realize that this isn't for me. This isn't, as a Texas voter, I don't vote for this stuff. Well, that's terrific. It, you know, we met, like I was saying, outside the prison in Huntsville um, uh, in January when Bobby Frada was being executed, and, and you just somebody something called on you to drive over to Huntsville and be there, right? Yeah, and I know I've already I've already in advance. I hate to say this, but I've already got a hotel for the twenty six for uh, William Spear. If that one goes down, I will be out there all day for the William Spear one if it happens. 
I know that for a fact. Okay. Uh, well, you may, you might want to check the date on that. I'm pretty sure I'm not just double checking. It's the 23rd. Well, 23rd. Okay. I better, I better t tell my hotel then. <laughs> yes. Yes. But um, so there's, a, there's, um, I saw the pictures that you sent earlier. They're on my phone. So I, I can't bring them up right here right now. Mm -hmm. But, but um, uh, what, tell me about the demonstration that happened earlier. Um, it was very respectful. People were polite. Nobody was derogatory or rude to anybody. Uh, they were on the side. A few of us were praying. Uh, people held up posters. I would say plus or minus maybe 15 to 20 people were out there, but we all stood pretty strong. Uh, right next to uh, San Fernando Cathedral Church, downtown San Antonio. It's across from the Justice Center. And, you know, if people came by and they had questions, we would talk to them. But if not, you know, we let them, we didn't bother nobody. We were just very respectful. And people were very respectful toward us. Almost like with the situation with the fraud execution where people flip, uh, said a few curse words or were semi-rude to us, you know, we still took it in stride. Just very professional. We're, we're not putting it in anyone's face. We're just being professional about a view that we have. That's all. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you know, what's next for you? I, I, I noticed you're not wearing your T-shirt tonight, but you're... But no. you're uh... <laughs> a little bit of a formal event here. So we're going to listen to three speakers. Uh, one lady, her brother was exonerated from uh, death row in Angola. He spent five years, uh, and we're going to listen to a, I believe a, a woman that her her dad was murdered. Her dad was murdered, and so she forgave him. So that's going to be like a forgiveness kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to wrap it up with one more speaker, which is going to be nice. So it's going to be about an hour and a half, two hour event here in San Antonio, at the University of Incarnate Word. Okay, well, thank you, Edward. Um, I'm going to just uh, pull up, I'm looking for these, uh, for our, t here we are. I'm going to pull up the, the pictures that you were showing earlier and see if I can't uh, bring this forward. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, there we go. There you go. See one of the, one of the images of, um, of the demonstration that you were at earlier. And let's see, here's the other one. Um, so UIW, what's that? Uh, yeah. University, oh, the University of the Incarnate Word, of course. So mm -hmm. they're, they're there. Now, that's a Catholic facility, and, and mm -hmm. I've been there myself. Uh, yeah. Okay, so there we are. Well, Edward, thanks so much, and we're grateful <laughs> for you checking in with us. Uh, we're still waiting. You know, uh, apparently even the Associated Press was con confused about which stay had been vacated. As far as mm -hmm. we know, let me look at the Supreme Court docket again to see what we get. Mm -hmm. Still nothing. And I know it's that, eight, what's it, that? It's about four till seven here, and I believe what the death warrant is – cut off at 11 or midnight in texas i can't believe uh, david was saying uh, rabbi goldstein um who is uh, in, connected in with the department of corrections was saying that if we get to 11 p.m texas mm -hmm. time then they'll have to start fresh with a new death warrant so That's awesome uh, so that means um yeah so it's seven o'clock there so we got five hours and let's see right no four hours four hours miracles happen miracles happen they do. All right. Well, thanks, Edward. Uh, enjoy the event tonight. See you guys. Peace. Thank you so much. Bye. Shabbos, are you able to hear me? He's still on. It appears he's still on. All right, well, we might have to get Jeff to sing a song. Um, sorry. Amanda's asking for links. We'll get, uh, I think they were put in here earlier, but I'll get you. Let me just do that right now. Um, actually, I'll show you. Uh, do, 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 do. Here is um, 
So this is the Supreme Court site that I'm refreshing. This is the orders of the court. You find it under case documents, orders of the court. It's at the U.S. Supreme Court site. And we're looking for a new miscellaneous order. Um, and when that comes up, then we'll have we'll know what, what, what they've decided. But I wanted to pop over and show you. This is the um, Jedediah's webpage. Um, that uh, Scott Langley with Death Penalty Action built. And you can see, I'm just refreshing it here. Um, here we go. And if you get down to here, um, you can see the news and press releases. That's where you, you click that. And this is where you get to uh, our press releases, which are just a few. <laughs> Excuse me, the, the news stories that are here. So, for example, um, you know, here is the article from uh, the Law Dork, which is um, a, a legal blog that talks about this. And this is, um, you know, noting that, uh, well, now he's saying that they, and this is from earlier, he must have changed this. Um, but suggesting that this that they're allowing things to go forward, but I don't think that's the case. And and what he had was uh, what he, what this link talked about earlier was just the um, let's see, do, 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 do. well that's more than we can get into right this moment. But that's where you can find the different links. Is um, let's see, get back here we are. Um, the thing I wanted to show you was the, yes, the Los Angeles Times piece today, which is where uh, Carrie Blackinger goes into the whole question of um, mental health issues, both in California and in Texas. So that's where you can find all that. I'll put a link to this page um, into the chat so y'all can find that more easily. Copy link. And here we are. Go to everybody. So this is what we say, what we call killing time, people. Um, I'm going to find some videos to share in a bit, and we'll see what we can do to keep this moving. And if you want to take a break, go away, come back in 10 or 15 minutes. Um, hopefully we'll have an update on things as we um, hold vigil and keep space and keep hope alive and um, you know, bring some prayer to this, uh, uh, invite you all to pray on your own if you are a praying person, to um, pray for the stay to be upheld or somehow the clock to run out. Got about four hours, just under four hours now to run the clock out, which I don't, you know, that, that would be a very un unexpected and unusual thing to have happen, but it seems like there's some people praying for that. Okay, we'll take it.
situation is we you know we've been waiting now for about two hours um david is is uh gonna check back in as soon as he hears something more but he has it from the head of uh, chaplain for tdcj uh the texas department of criminal justice that and and through him the attorney general that they are still waiting for word from the u.s supreme court on the original case that the Fifth Circuit upheld. So um, so that's where things are. And Mike, uh, we noticed on your, we've, we've, we played the video you made um, to pray for uh, Bertie Cunningham, the victim in this case. And you know, your whole demeanor was a little bit different. And I think that that has to do with your relationship with Jedediah and in the situation that we're in so i invite you to offer whatever perspectives you want to share at this point okay can you hear me yes yeah the the perspective that i can share <clears throat> is that uh this is torture this whole this whole thing is torture and i'm sure that's been said on this on this um, uh, vigil before I just was able to join. I'm sorry I couldn't join until now. But the closer one gets to, to the people who are um, impacted by this horror, the more one experiences the torture. And I've been experiencing it along with everybody here. Um, you know, I've known, I haven't known Jedediah. I'm sorry, I just, did I, did I read a message from David there? I think I saw a message on the screen saying that both of these days now have been vacated. So, David, you're saying that they have four hours to decide what to do, but um, but uh, if both cases, if both stays have been vacated, then uh, I can only imagine that they're going to try to go forward. Are you able to come back? I, I will defer to David if, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give, uh, he, he knows more than I do. Um, I just oh. all, all I can say, you asked for perspective. Yeah. This is the embodiment of the torture of this whole process. It is torture for for humanity, for all of humanity. That's all I can say. And um, it's um, evident for anybody who, whoever gets close to this process. And we are all living it. I'm living it. I've been living it. Yes. Uh, we're all traumatized. And what we've seen is, I mean, I'm coming back to January 20, was it 21, um, when we had uh, yeah. um, in International Holocaust Remembrance Day, January 27th, 2021. Well, I'm think, thinking specifically when Matthew Reeves was executed. That's it. That's yeah. it. That was that day. We were all on... He was actually on the phone with us through Carol, um, and he had him on the phone, and she was on the Zoom with us, and we literally heard him saying, hey, they've come to my cell, they're all gathering, I don't know what's happening next, and he was dead within 20 minutes, um, and that actually, that was traumatizing, and, and this is traumatizing in so many ways. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'll never forget that there were two executions that day, and um, both of individuals with um, uh, cognitive impairment. And um, it happened to be International Holocaust Remembrance Day, and we, he was online when we when we were told. You know, the the I think any. Um, um, I'm not a psych psychologist or psychiatrist, but I I I know that many will say when it comes to torture, it's the psychological. It's the psychological component that is the worst for, 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 for so many. And really, that's what we're talking about here. This is the essence of, of this torture. So this is how we're marking this day of a world day against the death penalty. Yeah. And uh, you know, the theme of it this year, they always have a theme, and the theme of it this year is torture, the torture of the death penalty. Yeah. Um, I went ahead and found, uh, went over to the prison show. This is uh, the live stream from the prison show. Yes, they would. Hey, Donna. All of these public servants. You know, they're all standing around there waiting. Um, I don't know what's happening. Um, oh, that's real. They don't know oh, my God. I'm sorry, guys. I made me. 
I put it right up in my face again. <laughs> Those, uh, the documentary people, uh -huh. they were at the station Friday night. Oh, they were? Yeah, and when, when I sat down, um, they put the camera, and when, when I turned, the camera was like this far from my face, and I was like, <laughs> going up my nose much? <laughs> Oh my gosh. But they made it, they, when you, he showed it to me and it looked far back. Oh, really? But it was really like. <laughs> they have pretty sophisticated equipment. Oh, they do, yeah. Because they had me walking around the cemetery talking about different headstones. And they were like way over. I'm like, can you see me? And they're like, we're in your face. Okay. Okay. So we're watching Jeffrey. No, he did not get a stay, but Supreme Court vacated it. Supreme Court vacated it. Court vacated it. Stupid Supreme Court. Oh, God. Oh, thank you, Sally. <laughs> I'm going to the... All right, so we'll keep that um, an awareness of that. You know, normally we've got uh, about a dozen people on our, you know, on our panel here that are ready to jump in. And today everybody had other things going on. We're, we're grateful, Cantor Zusman, that you're here, and uh, Gabby is still here, and 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 David will be popping back when he has something more to tell us. Um, My understanding is that from David, uh, that both of the stays have been vacated, that now it's just a four hour wait for some, for, for something. Is that, is that right? Well, what he was suggesting is that if, um, I mean, he, he was actually suggesting that the, the lawyers should just keep filing something and keep, the court's busy with this for, you know, until we get to 11 p.m. Texas time, at which point uh, the death warrant would 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 um, expire and they would have to start again. I don't see that happening. Um, and what I didn't see, you know, from the the prison show feed is just if there was any question of of, um, you know, if there's any indication that the um, witnesses have gone across the street. Uh, in fact, let me just ask. Okay. share this again but without the sound because they're just sort of chatting there but this is um this is the scene outside the prison right now um and i will just be back in a moment wait, wait to see if anybody has is replying to my question okay no paul is saying that they are um still waiting for decisions so as far as we can tell the prison the witnesses have not crossed the street um and uh, and so jedediah right now um is by himself he's in a holding cell by himself presumably Possibly with the other rabbi that was going to be in a room adjacent. I don't know. Yehuda um, Eber. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, as Jeff was describing, because Jeff was in that prison when Arthur Brown was killed um, a few months ago, I think it was in March. Um, so you can see from this video here, let me just enlarge this. Um, that building there on the left is the prison administration building and across this road we'll see people go i don't know if you can see my cursor i'm just waving it right here yeah the road um when people when we see them cross the road to go into the prison which is right over here to the right on the other side of these vehicles um 
that's where when, when we see people cross the road to go in, those are the witnesses. Um, I mean, it's, it's not just an alone individual. Usually you see, you know, it's the media witnesses and the victim family if they're there. Although in this case, I don't think that they're going to be there. Um, I'm not sure what the, what uh, Jedediah had planned in terms of witnesses. Uh, what's going on here? Um, oh, there we go. Something slid over. There we go. Um, so I'm not sure what... Uh, what's going on there but uh sometimes people lose their signal and yeah we are yep so friends we're in a holding pattern here um uh if 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 you'd like i mean i I can't i can't um you know offer a song for the whole thing but i can i can offer one one brief song now for while we're holding just to try to calm spirits okay so you mentioned Matthew Reeves and uh, the song that we sang to him that night when he found out that he was being executed was just a, a chant, really, of, of shalom, of peace. And that is needed in this world today more than most days. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. Shalom. Shalom. Let there be peace. Let there be peace. I lie, I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I It's always beautiful when you when you bring that. Um, Mike, I'm going to um, connect you with, uh, oh, hold on, I got a message here from Shavas. Okay, he's going to, Shavas is going to go on to the prison show and we'll be able to hear him through that. So let me just share if they're back, if their feed is back live. Um, okay. Let's see. This is it's what we call winging it. Um, Huntsville unit that said the drugs were located in. Hey y'all, hey, hey. Chevis Watson, back in mass incarceration, reporter on the prison show. Guess what? I've got four words. Don't kill for me. Yes. Don't Amen. kill for me. Amen. That's my message to Greg Abbott. That's my message to, to uh, Lucky Charm Ken Paxton. <laughs> yeah. And Dan Patrick. And all your, and all your ESPN uh, friends. 
Don't kill for me. Amen. Don't kill for me. I'm fringed up. As the book of Numbers tells us, who are Jews. Hoping that the Holy Spirit comes to visit these liars and manipulators with the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. Amen. And they see Jedediah as the person that he is rather than the piece of paper that they continue to use to weaponize him on. Have you ever done anything wrong? I know I have. Kim Paxton has. Kim, Kim and Angela Paxton. <laughs> he got away with it. Yeah, he got away with it. <laughs> but but do you think do you think for a second that Kim Paxton is saying, damn, I got I got I got off from that. I gotta play it safe. Or or maybe he's 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 saying, I'm just gonna be a better person. Well guys that are in here have those same kind of thoughts. Guys in here who have committed murder or or, or 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 any kind of assault, at some point, it couldn't take a chance on me. I'm ready to invest in myself and become the person I want to become. They share this with visitors. They share this with other brothers inside or other sisters inside. Uh, but they share this with the guards. They share this with the sergeants and the lieutenants. And it, and it's simply it? denied. It's simply, it's simply ignored. You're always he held to that conviction. We're out here wondering, when will this stop? But, but I'm also wondering, where are the rest of the 30 year olds and 20 year olds, 40 year olds out here? We've got, we've got older women out here. Hey older now. women and men. <laughs> and these these are women these are older women and men that have been carrying the torch for a very long time. We have Clementine. We have got one other person under thirty here. It's okay. <clears throat> this, this couple over there. We had two classes here. Yeah, we have classes here but Clementine but I'm talking about some people that are gonna come and stay. Stay. Not, uh, not uh, folks that are coming major. just to get a word or, or do something for a class or a course. <laughs> but that's gonna come out here and sit in the rain or Come out here and bring coffee. Come out here and bring an umbrella. Come out here and bring their best spirit to, to help uplift the, the spirits of folks who have been carrying this this travesty, this, this shit for, for decades. Okay, I'm for calling decades. to you, sir. We, 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 we've, had, we've had too many. We've had too many that have been wrongfully murdered. Um, we, we've got too many that are still on death row that are innocent. Melissa Lucio. Who's calling? Oh, my name is Gloria. Gloria's calling public information. Pardon me? Why do you need my name? I just want to know if there's an execution happening. Are you a reporter? Yes, I'm a reporter. Okay, with uh, which outlet? Workers World Newspaper. All right. Well, thank you, Gloria. Uh, that's Gloria Rubak. She's um, one of the people that's been doing those prison vigils for a very long time. And, you know, it's it, um, we're grateful for those folks that are always out there. And at the same time, it, it's, uh, it's a little bit unfocused. So we'll come back to them. Um, and again, thanks, everybody, for hanging in there. We're waiting for those of you. This chat going on, and Chivas was getting into it a little bit too, just asking the question, where are all the people? And I'm seeing that that's in the chat here too. Uh, Rugi is on with us, um, and another voice of reason. Um, let me make this a little bit more interfaith here if I can, if Rugi will come up and join us a little bit. I'll bring an international interfaith voice to the conversation if she wants to join us. Uh, Gail, you want to put your question in the chat? Then I see your hand is raised. Um, folks, we are waiting for word um, from the prison system about what's going to happen next and from the court. So let me just look at the Supreme Court docket again. Uh, other exhausting night. Ruki has declined to be on. She was up all night with us over at the, at the vigil here in, in Columbus, Ohio. So no problem, Ruki. 
Um, still no order from the court. And which uh, which order exactly are we waiting on at this point? So the order that was let me get back over here. I'll show you. Um, All right, so this is the orders page, orders of the court. Um, and today, earlier today, this is the order list. This is just all the cases that were before the court that they were decided not to take. I mean, this, this comes out twice a week sometimes. All these cases were denied. Okay, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about um, this order here, and I'm just going to flip over to this, so this is the Supreme Court docket for the case that we're waiting for a word on. Okay, it's case number 23-70005. Um, and, um, and, and you can see the main document. This is the state asking that the execution uh, be vacated, that the, um, the state be vacated. Right. This here is the reply from the state saying um, uh, no, or, or, or say, well, it's, it's the reply of the applicant. Uh, oh, okay. So, so um, this is the opposition. This is the reply. We're waiting for something else to happen here. It's case 237770005. And if you look over here at the orders, this is the one order that's come out, and that's in case one, uh, case uh, one. Colon two three CV one one seven zero, which is different. So whatever I believe that that is the case that's about um the about the question of the drugs. Okay, right. And, and the case that we're waiting for is the case about the evidence and whether Jedediah can have DNA testing in the evidence of an unrelated case to his except it's related because that's the case that they said it's because of that that he did, which we know he didn't do. It's because of that that he's future a uh, future danger and therefore has right. to be right? So it's the future dangerousness case that uh, apparently we're still waiting, but there's a lot of confusion. Mike, you, should, you just sent me a little while ago an Associated Press story saying both stays have been vacated. Well, if both stays have been vacated, then why haven't they killed the guy yet? Right. Yeah. That's Texas moves my, pretty quickly, right? <clears throat> that's what's very. This is a very confusing thing. By the way, uh, Mike Ludwig is, was on a little while ago from Truth Out, and he. I'm going to send you an email, Mike. He he wants some uh, photos of Jedediah. So I know you've got some of the original photos that you could send on to Mike for use in his article that he'll be publishing about these Supreme Court shenanigans. And that's all we can call it is Supreme Court shenanigans. It's craziness and the way the system is working. And, and we have a lot of work to do in this country to change the system. Um, we've got to elect, uh, well, you know, unfortunately the way it works here is Supreme Court justices either have to die or resign um, in order to be moved. And that's why presidential elections matter that's why it, um, you know, right. we saw three appointments under tr President Trump, and that has done a lot of damage to the entire criminal legal system and civil legal system in this country. Um, and it's going to take that level of shift before we might see um, Supreme Court justices that are more about the rule of law. Mm hmm Put it frankly. Mm -hmm. Because what, as Rob Dunham was making the point earlier, they just don't care. And if it's not going to be something about their political leanings, then they're not going to rule, it would seem. Okay, again, I'm not an attorney. And, you know, I can't make legal pronouncements, nor do I wish to. But that's, that's the, as I see it, is, you know, it's going to take changing the entire face of, you know, of the representation um, to people that are going to be able to look and, and, and create uh, what well, we need. A, we need the opportunity to, to change some of the justices on the state, on the U.S. Supreme Court. 
and to people that will be fair-minded and won't just say whatever they need to say in order to get appointed and confirmed by the U.S. Senate and then just do whatever they want, you know. So it's a question of how long people will last. And, and typically what happens is they'll see who the next president's going to be and wait. And that's when the opportunity for a Supreme Court justice to resign is when they can see that somebody that they think will appoint the, a person that will stay, you know, that will think kind of like they are, uh, and then that's when they can resign. So sometimes yeah. you, you, you know, people die and you never can predict when you're going to die unless, of course, you're facing an execution. Um, but otherwise, for the rest of us, you know, we're never promised another day. And but that's what's going to have to shift. Right. In addition, what's going to have to shift is just the thinking of people about do we care? And somebody was asking, I think it was Fiona or somebody was asking um, about where are all the people and why are more people not concerned about this stuff? Finola, Finola McDowell was asking this. Why do so few people in the U.S. care about this system of revenge? I think the answer to that is that um, people don't care because they don't want to care. They don't want to have to. Um, they don't want to have to think about it. You know, as yeah. I like to say often, you know, people don't want to know what's going on because if you know and it's wrong, then you have to do something. And if you don't, then you're saying it's okay. Shavas, did you have something you wanted to bring? You got to unmute. Well, then we got to figure out your devices for next time so we don't have to worry about this thing. <laughs> hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear yeah. you now. Go hey, ahead. Hey, we're still, we're still here live, lifting up prayers, hopes that, that, that this does not go through. We are not crying, but we are, we are suppressing our tears starving for justice yeah starving for justice we've got we carry the spirits of all of you with us hoping that some good news comes hoping that they reassess this 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 is this is this is this is even harmful for me abe you know i did my time in in huntsville so it, it's it's kind of traumatic to be here again um but anything for the cause, anything for the movement. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know why you know, legal professionals on the back end don't see that this is a violation of due process. This is a, this is a, you know, Jedediah did not have the best legal representation to start out with. When, when does the Constitution matter? Um, That's what we were it, talking it, about. It's, it's, it's just really harmful, man. And, and it's been peace to see some of the folks out here, but 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 folks can't stay, you know. I, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, you know, if I had the money, I could, you know, I could just bring Abe, Ron, Tom, Kimber, Allie, Marilyn, <laughs> Terry, and the rest out here because because we're the folks that are down to stay all night. Well, you know, that's us. It's the the, the prison radio folks are taking off. Yeah, folks, folks, unfortunately, just can't stay. We've got the team that's willing to stay here to the end, and that's Miss Danny, Miss Linda, Gloria, Miss Joy. We, we've got folks that are willing to stay here as long as it takes. But, but again, like I said on the live, these are all older women. Yeah, where, where, where are the men? And I, and I know, I know some of you guys, but where are the men locally? That 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 are willing to to support these women and, and support these movements. Um, it, it, it just sucks that that so many things get fractured and, and, and the, the movement to chase justice gets fractured and siloed. You know, we should have 100 people here. Yeah. Like the streets should be filled with people saying second chance, second chance, second chance, clean slate, clean slate. God help us. God help us. But, you know, as as the night continues, the, the numbers get lesser and lesser, but we're holding on hope. And, and, and we're not only lifting up the name of Jedediah Murphy, but we're lifting up the name of Billy Allen. We're lifting up the name of Mike Crump. We're lifting up the name of Melissa Lucio, Erica Shepard, 
Patricia Russo, uh, Russo in, in Florida. We're, we're, we're lifting up the names of Glenn Simmons and in 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 folks who 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 have overcome, who have come overcome. We're, we're lifting up the names of those we've lost, Carl Bunton and Charles Hood, and 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 it's it's just a really dark dark time. Uh, like Gloria just called and, and talked with TDCJ just to see if there was going to be an execution. And they're, they're more concerned with her first and last name. It, it, you know, it, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So you know, I take the, the chance to share and speak. I'll come back on a little bit later, uh, but, but definitely want to distribute, you know, the Sean and the mic. We've got some great people here on the call. want to thank the rabbis for being present. I want to thank Ali for being present, Jeff for being present. Um, all supporters, all supporters, all allies, all co-conspirators to abolish the death penalty. Thank you again, Abe. Of course. Thank you, Shavaz. Just sending a note over to Mike Ludwig and, and you, Mike Zeusman. Okay. Um you know, we're killing time. And we're waiting for word of, uh, we don't want to move the spotlight there. Alana, you, you, you there? It looks like you put your phone down for a second. Magdaleno, I see you. All right, well, he put his phone down for a second, but he's he's, he's uh, showed up late, but on time tonight. Uh, we're waiting to hear from um, Magdalena Rosavila. Gabi is here, and we're waiting for Rabbi Goldstein to come back and give us some um, an update. Um, I don't think we've ever had such a connection as as him on on this is directly connected to the head chap on the TDCJ and he himself is a contractor to TDCJ and has been sharing with us a lot of, a lot of the inside scoop, um, which, and, and Jed and I has been very fortunate to have such an advocate as he, um, you know, we're going to see where it goes next. But we're coming up on uh, over two and a half hours we've been on this so far. This is not by far uh, our longest, uh, but it's an Alabama execution. We always make sure we got a couple extra meals sitting around because we know it's going to be on for hours and hours sometimes. Uh, but luckily, they don't have any dates set yet, although we know they're working on setting new dates and they want to try out their new gas chamber there in Alabama. Um, you know, the next execution scheduled is back in Texas again on the 23rd with Will Spear. Um, and then we've got another Texas execution. Let's just look uh, on uh, November 9th. And then the last execution currently on the schedule for the year is November 30th with Bill Hancock back in Oklahoma. I think he's got a good shot also at um, at a stay. They're making some some solid arguments. We'll see <laughs> about whether you know, Phil Hancock has a pretty strong argument that you know he was he the murder he, he killed two men in self defense. They he went to a space where, without a weapon and had a weapon pulled on him, and he ended up wrestling that weapon away, um, and and then using it to protect himself. And that's his argument. I don't know what the truth is. I just know that's the argument that's being made and. And uh, and maybe it'll be heard. That's the whole thing. Is can you get your arguments heard? <sighs> yep. Andrea is noting. Um, you know, we tomorrow morning. Uh, there's an, uh, the first hearing. It'll be. Uh, you can be, you can watch it on the Ohio channel. There'll be the hearing in. Um, in the Ohio uh, House Finance Committee on the bill to abolish the death penalty in Ohio. Magdaleno, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I'm on the side of the road right now. Yeah. Okay, well, pick your phone up and give us some wisdom, if you have any wisdom for us. Are you still well, in Mexico? I, 
Well, I'm in here. Uh, I'm actually going back to Mexico. I'm outside of Tucson. Can you hold the phone think, up a little higher? Uh, pardon? Can you hold your, your phone up a little bit higher so so we can ask better? Thank you. That's better. Okay. Well, I didn't want people to see my ugly face, but, uh, you know, I have been out on um, on prisons where we started out with a great group and they kept holding us off and... Uh, and sometimes we had to wait for hours and you're talking about it, being outside of prisons when they're executing people when they're executing people and uh, when they resumed <laughs> executions in washington state many years ago we were out there in the snow and so we would have to take a break about every three hours and go into the cars and we couldn't sit in our cars in the parking lot we had to drive away and then come back but I think um, what we have to do is, uh, and I appreciate the, the brother and the other folks that are able to be there, but a lot of times we can't be there physically, but spiritually we're with them. And we know how difficult it is when the government is holding us in abeyance. So I say that we come to bear witness and bearing witness isn't always easy. So I just want to say that I'm, I'm sending my prayers and my best jalapenos to the people that have been there outside the prison and are still there, is that that's what we have to do, is they want us to go away. But we're not going to go away physically. We're not going to go away emotionally. We're not going to go away spiritually. We're going to stay on the Internet and every place that we can talk about this inhumanity of the United States, because this is a dark chapter. And I want you to know that you're not alone. We've all been through this, but we need to hold you up and thank you and say that one day we'll all be together and be able to sing that we had overcome. Not we shall overcome, but we have overcome. So I want to thank Death Penalty Action for bringing us all together. Gracias. Can you sing us a little bit of We Shall Overcome? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to do, do, do it in Spanish. Nosotros venceremos, nosotros venceremos, nosotros venceremos ahora. Sí, oh, en mi corazón yo creo, nosotros venceremos. We shall overcome. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you, Magdalena, for indulging me in that. Um, you know, one of my favorite me memories of you, Magdalena, for, for those of you who don't know, we, Magdalena and I go way, way back. And, um, and, and when, when Cesar Chavez, the, the leader of the farm worker movement, died, Magdalena was hired to be the first executive director of the Chavez Foundation. And then he brought me out to work with him. So I was his assistant. And we actually lived together. If you can imagine this, yeah, mobile home trailer, <laughs> and the moment the memory that I'm thinking of is is just one. You know, he had a little garden there, and 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 so this is these this is in, in in outside of a little town, a little dot on the map called Keene, California. It's on Highway 58 between Mojave and Bakersfield, in the hills. And if you've read the the book, The Grapes of Wrath, these are the hills that are in the opening of The Grapes of Wrath, and that's where we lived, and that's where. Uh, it's now a monument, a, a national historic monument to, to Chavez. Uh, and if you're ever in that neighborhood, you got to go visit it. But we lived there back in, uh, what was it, 2000, no, 1994, 95. Um, right. One morning, McDonough comes out, he steps out on the on our little, um, I hate to call it a deck, but whatever it was, and he starts singing the um, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning from Oklahoma. And oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Yep, that was me. Yeah, so, you know. But Abe, I should tell, I should tell, can I tell a singing story? Okay. So after McCleskey, the decision on McCleskey, you we had, had a big what rally. That, is now. Uh, that was a case on race, um, a national case where we, uh, where the Supreme Court said everybody had to prove their own case of racial discrimination which is really a racist statement. But McCleskey, Warren McCleskey, we had had a big rally with uh, 
Reverend Shuttleworth, uh, Coretta Scott King, uh, Black Police, uh, and Reverend, um, uh, I, I forget the Reverend's name, but all, all the Black leadership. So then so the McCluskey on, decision. To, hold on. I'm tell people that my, the McCluskey case is an important U.S. Supreme Court case. Brian Stevenson talks about that, this in his book, Just Mercy. And anytime you hear Brian Stevenson speak, he's going to talk about McCluskey. It's the decision where they said they could not find for the defendant and his allegations or assertions that racism impacted his death sentence for fear of too much justice. Because if they found for him, then they would have to, you know, basically dismantle much of the prison structure in this country because it would prove that racism exists. So because they couldn't grant relief to all the people, they wouldn't do it for the one where the evidence was clear that racism exists and how we seek the death penalty for people who kill white people, especially when they are black people. So that's what McCluskey's about. Okay, McDonald. Okay. So anyway, the first person that was going to be executed was a white brother. And uh, we uh, we decided to take the coffin and do a civil disobedience. So Reverend Tim McDonald, who was deputy director of Southern Christian Leadership Conference, then he led us and we had some white ministers, mostly black. And, uh, and uh, we did a demonstration and we all got arrested. And if you know you've been to jail, there's a lot of clanking, swearing, and yelling, and it's just very noisy. And the holding cell that we were in was about 25, 30 feet long, and there was a telephone at the end, so you could call your family. And I had to call my daycare and say, you know, that I'm in jail, but I'll be out soon, and I'll pick up my daughter, Aviva. And um, so by the time I got um, off the phone, uh, the whole county jail Fulton County was quiet because the black and white ministers and others were, were singing Negro spirituals so I went up and got behind him and I started singing we shall overcome Tim McDonald grabs me by the elbow takes me to the back of the holding cell and he said the ministers would appreciate it if you didn't sing <laughs> I said why they said um you're throwing them off key. And I said, but I'm a prisoner. I have a right to sing. He says, yeah, but we might have to hurt you. <laughs> but I got, I got back at him uh, two years later when I went, he was head of black clergy and they, they had me do the closing prayer. And the closing prayer for black clergy is we sing a few verses of we shall overcome, then they have a new preach. And so I preached about that incident and where Tim McDonald threatened to hurt me. If I kept singing, because I said, prisoners have a right to sing. And Tim got up laughing afterwards and said, yeah, we'd have put a lot of big hurt on you, Meg Delano. But I don't think that you have to carry a tune. You have to carry your heart into every song that you do as protests. And, um, and I think that we have to have music, singing, and prayers, and hope to hold ourselves together, because it's... It's the arts that make us strong in our movement. And that's why I'm glad that we have people that come and pray in Hebrew, pray in English, people who sing for us, because we need each other's strength to keep going. And that's why I come on these calls. Uh, I've, I've been driving on the, since about 8 o'clock or 6 o'clock this morning. So I didn't check my phone until 30 minutes ago. And I, I said, but I wanted to be with you all. And. I want to thank you for holding my spirit together in this difficult time. Thank you, Magdaleno. Thank you, uh, uh, Ebony from Oklahoma, saying thank you for singing We Shall Overcome beautifully in Spanish. Um, so we're, we're grateful for everybody that comes on these things. And, and you know, it, it's always kind of weird when we fall into this sort of banter as we're sitting here holding vigil, waiting to see whether there's going to be an execution or not tonight. And I'm just sitting here refreshing again the um, orders at the court page on the U.S. Supreme Court page. Um, we heard Shabazz say earlier that people are falling away and um, can't stay at the prison vigil outside the prison in Huntsville, Texas. 
Um, however, we still have, you know, Rabbi Goldstein is still on hold with us and, we're, and is going to be with us, it looks like, all night. Hopefully he's got his phone plugged in, um, keeping the charge. And we still have, you know, we've had a, a, a bunch of people are coming and going. So thank you, everybody that's, that's holding on here. And, you know, it's very confusing. The Associated Press wrote an article, um, published it. Uh, a little while ago, it basically said that both stays have been vacated and yet no execution has happened. And uh, we're not sure what's going on. So we're waiting for word as what's what's going on. It's, it's an unusual situation for us in Texas. Normally in Texas, it's just, you know, wham, bam, they got it down. We know what's going to happen and it happens. And so this is strange. Um, and we're grateful. And we're hopeful. Yeah, you know, the last time, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the last time we were on a holding pattern in Texas was with John, John Ramirez. Ramirez. And yeah, and and John, I think what was it, eight, nine or ten o'clock? The Supreme Court ruled and allowed that he he got in a whole other year of life thanks to his Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, it was on Rosh Hashanah. Yeah, thanks to his lawyer Eric Allen, they that's John Ramirez was the guy that sued the state of Oklahoma and the state of Texas and won, forcing them to allow him to have his his Christian well his pastor in the in the death chamber with him, laying hands on and praying out loud. Okay, that was not allowed prior to John Ramirez, and and he won that. They ended up killing him just a year later. But he got a year, an extra year of life, and it was in one of these situations where we are holding and waiting and waiting and waiting, and it's such a surprise. So, you know, that's that's the situation that we're in. Is we're in a holding pattern. We're waiting to see what's going to happen next. It looks like Gabby's going to stay all, up all night with us tonight, and, and we're all day against the death penalty from Germany. Um, if we got people from other countries that are still with us, put them in the chat where you're watching from. Um, so we know who's with us tonight. Um, and, and... Abe, if I could, I'd like to just respond to uh, Magdaleno for a second. Um, if, if that's all right. Yes, please. Um, you know, you, you mentioned banter and he mentioned singing. Well, when I was um, when I was a congregational cantor, we had a, something called banter with the cantor. And it was uh, an opportunity to uh, to for people in the congregation who were lay people to learn how to how to lead services. And it reminded me of the fact that as a cantor, I would be um, instructing a lot of the the uh, youth in our congregation as they were becoming preparing to become a bar or bat mitzvah, the coming of age in the Jewish tradition. So for men at the age of 13, for for men, for young men, for young women at the age of 12. And a lot of these people I would encounter, the young the young kids would, would say to me, Oh, I have a horrible voice. I can't I can't do any singing. You know, and, and the traditional bar bat mitzvah ceremony, you're supposed to um you you're supposed to go up in front of a congregation a whole community of everyone you know and sing well not everybody's a singer and so when magdalena was talking about that story about about not being a singer first of all i thought you sounded great magdalena but what i would I tell when you lie to me what's that i love it when you lie to me yeah well the truth is it, it, it comes from within you know i mean i it, I, what I would tell too, right? Fine. what's that so I thought it was good too, and so did people in the audience. People love. Yes, that. Not, I'm not lying to you. When it comes from the heart, that's what matters, and that's what I would tell these these students. And I'm coming. I'm going somewhere with this, because Jedediah, when he should have been getting instructions from from a cantor, you know, about preparing for his bar mitzvah and getting encouragement, if he sang off key to say it's okay, it's okay, sing from your heart. At that time in his life, he was falling through the cracks of this broken foster care system. He didn't get an opportunity to, to, to celebrate becoming a bar mitzvah with his community. And he didn't have the loving support of a, of, um, of a close-knit family network around him to, to, to li uplift his spiritual voice, the voice from within. And, um, and I just, as you're talking about your singing, and I'm remembering working with these bar and bat mitzvah students, I can't help but think of Jedediah as that young, that young boy who never had a chance, who never had a chance. And this is how society is responding to, to that. And, um, 
uh, I just, it just all comes very much to a head for me. And, you know, um, uh, we're talking about the theme of torture and uh, people I've encountered when I explain that this is psychological torture, the people on the other side of the, of the argument will say something to the effect of, well, they deserve it. Who cares? You know, this is, this is what they've had coming to them. This, we, we should be inflicting this torture upon them as punishment. And uh, I would argue that as humanity moves closer overall, I would hope toward a more ethical grounding in our actions and in who we are as human beings, then we must recognize that in inflict, the inflicting of torture is anathema in any way. And, and that's what we're doing right now. You know, no matter how much a person can rely on their faith, if it were me, I, I can, I'm a chaplain. I'm a person of, of faith. I would call myself that. I'm an ordained clergy. If I were told that I was going to be put to death and I was counting down my days, my hours, my minutes, no matter how much I profess my faith, I can tell you that within, within me, I would, be, I would be suffering beyond measure. I could put on maybe a face. and I'm not going to speak for anybody else. I don't want to speak for Jedediah. I speak for myself. You know, it would be, it would be the height of cruelty. And that's what we're experiencing here. And, um, and so, yes, it's important to be able to come together and reflect and, and banter and be here. Yes, yes. And, and also re remember um, this moment, this, this moment of, of horror for, for this person who, who we know and who's touched our lives. I could go on, but I don't want to um, wax too much uh, um, philosophical well, here. I want to respond. I want to do a rebuttal. Is, uh, you sure. know, for this ballad that you talked about that didn't get a chance to sing, every time the hear our cantor at these vigils and the other people sing and pray, is we're actually praying and singing for all those who never had a chance or nobody gave them an opportunity to free their spirit to connect with uh, their spiritual side. Because when I hear you uh, and, and, you know, praying and chanting with this, it takes me to another place. And it's uh, always, your voice has been a safe place. For me. Not your face, but your voice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know. I'll turn off my video. <laughs> okay. Oh, thank you, Leno. I pre I, I receive that, and um, I, I, you know, we are in this together, and and our spirits together can can transcend. So I'm grateful that we are here. You know, there's a, I, th I think right now there are three of us. Or there are there are one, two, three, four of us live on here, right? Gabby, you're here. And, um, you know, within the Jewish tradition, if you have three, three people you need in order to have the traditional prayers after meals, you have to have at least three people to make a zimun, to make a community that qualifies for a call and answer to have a proper prayer. So, you know, people may wonder, well, where is everybody? Um, everybody has, of course, things going on, but we have this core here and um, and that is enough. And where there are where there are people gathered, where there are at least three gathered, then there is enough to make um, to make a holy argument for life. All right. Well, we're going to take a little break here um, with a video or two. Um, check back in ten minutes. We'll see where things are. Um, but or just stick with us and and let's hear. Um, this is uh, actually a song that, that Gabi wrote and, and um, will speak to us all. Thank you. 
peaceful one Not in my name People take from others' hands Even life there's too much danger Someone's killed by any chance Suspect is chased and arrested Maybe guilty but who knows Verdict of a clueless jury Death sentence the bailiff shows Not in my name, not in my name. Stop executions execution. now. Light the flame of abolition. Make a world a better one. Make a world a peaceful one. Feeling with you hurt and grieving. Hardly finding words. To say, how could anyone endure which destiny you have to pay? Don't strike back, don't be revengeful, seek forgiveness instead. Peace and freedom from within needs breaking circles of the dead. in my name time I get to hear it. Oh, sorry, I forgot to run the credits. Um, let's get back here. And... How about running now? Yeah. 
There we go. So we are, again, if you're um, somehow just joining us on Facebook or on one of the other social media spots, we are um, in a holding pattern waiting to hear what's going to happen tonight uh, in Texas. We've got, uh, they say, if we can make it another just under three hours uh, without an execution taking place, then they may have to um, they may have to abandon it for tonight. So we're here. We're seeing. Um, let's see what happens. We're waiting. Let me check again. Question about that, Abe, if I may. Uh, in all your years, um, first of all, I want to also echo what you said about the song. Thank you, Gabi. A beautiful song. I'm always touched to hear that. Um, my question, Abe, is in all your years doing this, and you've been doing this for many more years than me, have you ever encountered in Texas where a warrant has expired at the end of a night? I can't recall that I have. Um, I don't know. Okay. That is, you know, the, the, the only time, and, and I guess maybe I haven't paid enough attention, but you know, the first round number execution that I protested outside the prison, that was the 400th execution. It was in the 1996 or seven, somewhere in there. Uh, Flint Gregory Hunt killed in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and now, you know, if this happens tonight, it's 1,578, I think. Um, you know, not that everybody's a number, just saying that, that, that what I'm saying is that I've been doing this for over 1,100 executions. And um, and that's uh, the one time that really stands out was when we were looking at the first federal execution in um, July 2020. Right. And that one, um, we got to midnight and it hadn't happened. And we we're all like, oh my gosh, it ain't going to happen. I mean, we, you know, the police had barred access to the prison area in the federal, uh, so the, the federal prisons in Terre Haute. And what they had wanted to do was create a pen that we all have to be in. So they wanted us in the middle of COVID to get on a bus and go through security and be driven into a place where without our electronics or anything like that, we said no. Um, so we wanted to be outside the prison. So they blocked the roads and wouldn't let, let us get anywhere near it. So we were at this uh, this car dealership on the corner of the major road closest to the prison, about two miles away, and and reporters. Um, Adam Pinsker from uh, at that time was with uh, Indiana Public Radio and Liliana Segura from The Intercept. We were all hanging out um, and we got to midnight and we all thought, oh my gosh, Midnight, expired warrant, and going to happen. And we all went to bed. We went to our hotels and we went to bed. And I got a call about 6 a.m. It was Bill, Reverend Bill Breeden um, was calling me to say, hey, they were moving forward. And he was outside the prison and we should all get over there. And we did. And, and at that point, the roadblocks had come down, you know, because they had sent the reporters away. And, and, um, and but they were fighting overnight, and it turns out they said your warrant has expired. We're giving you a new one, and everybody thought that that meant because at that time when you got a federal death warrant, um, it was four months from the time of getting the right. warrant to the time of being able to do the execution. Well, for that night, they said um, they said uh, your warrant has expired. We're giving you a new one. It's now. Get it on the table, and and I'm I, I'm sorry I have to look up that man's name, but he was basically held on the gurney, strapped down for over four hours, and his attorneys learned that he had been executed from a tweet. Okay, uh, because the, the attorneys, of course, were uh, you had to you know be really confident of going into the prison, in that and this was in the middle of COVID before there were any vaccine or anything so you know that was one of the arguments that was made and failed is that each and it turns out to have been true every one of those executions was a mass uh covid exposure event yeah super um, spreader yeah super spreader event that's right i ended up getting covid uh along with um uh oh, what's his name uh he's still with not uh public radio um Gosh, I'm terrible with names when I'm exhausted, uh, and sometimes when I'm not exhausted. But, but, but 
uh, he and I came home from those federal executions with COVID. And in any case, that's so that's the one I remember. That mm -hmm. happened one more time um, in the federal executions where it was it went overnight and the execution ended up. So there was supposed to be coming. It was Lisa at, Montgomery, the other one. Yeah. Yeah, it was supposed to be calling them at 6 p.m. And that first federal execution ended up happening at about 8.30 a.m. Um, so more than 12 hours after, uh, more than 14 hours after it was supposed to be. But that's as far as it got delayed. Right. Yeah, and they just said, we're going to do this. I don't know if they can do that under state law in Texas, but. I don't know. I don't um, know. Yeah. Yeah. So I see Paris Powell is texting me. Paris is an Oklahoma death row survivor wanting to know what's happening. And um, I'm just telling them we are still waiting. Um, Dovi, do you got any word for us? You there? Sorry, Susan. I'm not going to sing anything for you. Um, but I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to mention that from the comments. I saw them. I would welcome it, but uh, I don't uh, think I've ever heard you sing, Abe, and all these. Uh, and I just started getting involved at that time. You, you mentioned the federal executions. It's been a few, only a few years for me. I don't think I've heard you sing in that time. Um, and you know, they, there's a reason, I guess. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to get us in, another song to play. Um, here we go. Let's see if this downloads. I may be out of space on my computer. That might be what's going on. <sighs> Mike, is Jedediah able to text you as long as does he still have his, um, no, no, he doesn't have that. I think if I, if I recall correctly, um, in Texas, once, a, once a person is transferred to, to Huntsville, um, then they don't have access to the, to the tablet anymore. Just, I, I was looking around for the things I've downloaded and, and actually I'm finding this message that I have from Jedediah. So let me just share this real quick. Um, he says, uh, short update. This is just a short note that I wanted to send everyone who's praying and pulling for me and my loved ones. This back and forth is challenging because you go from a gut punch to hope to a maybe. I mean, this is really, truly speaking to the torture of the death penalty. The torture of this punishment is not what will happen to me, but what I see happening to my wife and family. And they won't make me suffer for what happened 23 years ago by giving me the rest of my life to think about it and everything life in prison brings, but they make my loved ones suffer instead. That is what I don't understand. And hopefully, and God willing, I will have to stay stand. And if not, then we all have to accept that this was his will, not ours. I've been blessed, and I thank all of you for your prayers and love along the way. To the people who are in Israel and have family there, may peace come to you all, and I grieve along with you for the lives lost and the pain war brings to everyone. Thank you to you all and please stay positive regardless. And that is the essence of the messaging that I've been receiving from um, Jedediah. And I know Mike, you also had much more correspondence yeah. than I, but it's always this beautiful caring about others, you know, and, but that's the first time I saw him talking about that torture that, that we're putting him through right now. As Jeff was saying earlier, he's sitting in a little room right off the execution chamber, just waiting to see, what the next knock on the door is going to be. Yeah. Yeah, it's been consistent. Oh, I'm sorry. You go, on, go ahead, Magdalena. Lana, did you have anything to say? No, no, I just... Uh, no, I'm going to... Okay, well... Then. Okay. Well, good to see you, Leno. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I was just saying, uh, your, your signal is really weak. Um, Did you hear me? Say it again, please. 
I said I'm going to not catching it. a meeting, but I'll be praying from there. Uh, I see. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Lino. Yeah, I just want to affirm what you said, Abe, that, uh, you know, from from day one, um, Jedediah has professed his faith and have been in touch with him for years now. And it, the, the letters, the emails have always been framed by that um, hope that I am well and, and asking about me and a lot of individuals I'm in touch with. That's not the case. But it always is with him, and and it's consistent as well with what's with what we've seen happening in in Israel. Uh, but that message you've read, and another one that that he read, where he's hoping for peace, and and his heart is with everybody impacted by the killings there. And you know, this this is um, you know our movement is is standing against against killing and and um he's consistent with that messaging now across the board and he always has been and so that's why when reporters have asked me about his his you know uh, his attitude and his uh, repentance i can be completely honest i don't i'm not making anything up it's complete truth to say that has been from day one fully repentant and um and sincere and um and desiring to to help the world become a better place. Mm-hmm. Speaking of making it, the world a better place, I'm going to share another song. This one comes from Common Hymnal, uh, which is a group that does um, music, and and we asked them to actually come on and be live with us, and they said, "No, we don't want to do that." We don't, um, but but we'll pr- we'll give you permission to run our videos. So here's a video from from Common Hymnal. Uh, let's see.
Refreshing the screen over at the U.S. Supreme Court orders page. Still no change. Still no word from outside the prison. Hello. Yes. Okay, so I just communicated again with the head chaplain, just a little update, and there's <laughs> no ruling has come down. Oh. And the head chaplain is with Jedediah right now. And they're davening. I sent him a text to read the Shema with him now, regardless of whatever happens, because it's always a mitzvah to say Shema. And I sent him the words of Adon Olam in English to read it to, with, together with him right now. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us, so uh, again, lots of people not Jewish here, oh, yeah. the Shema is like the, 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 what, what, the, the one thing you got to say if you're being killed or being, you know, here on Israel. It's a statement, or... yeah, the Shema is a statement of faith of, of, in God, in God's unity, and it's the most important thing you should say, uh, if God forbid as a person is going to pass away, but there's also biblical commandments that you say it in the morning and you say it in the evening. So it's not like being wasted, even if he lives. It's being done as a good deed of saying um, this, this statement, this prayer. And Adon Olam is also a very nice, beautiful Jewish prayer that speaks about uh, God as master of the world. And it's in the Vidui prayers as well. And it, I mean, I could post the translation on the chat room. So we'll see it. So I asked... I just ask permission that if I can sing it to him, uh, if the chap will allow me to call his phone and put on speaker, and I'll sing it to him in Hebrew. Oh, but uh, I'm waiting to hear back from that. But that's that. That's all I have right now. We're still just waiting. Well, gosh, if if um, it'd be beautiful that you could do that, but maybe Cantor Zeusman can sing it for all of us now. Yeah. Oh. Please do so. Well, I'd much rather hear David do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we do it as a duet? Oh, well, <laughs> across the... Well, okay. All right. You want to do the first verse? Okay. Uh, the slow, the regular slow one, or you want the Hollywood version? Uh, whichever you prefer. Thank you. Azai Melech Shemoy Nikra. Your turn. The Asare Kiflot Akol, Levado Imlof Noda, the Hu Haya, the Hu Hove, the Hu Yiche Betifara. The Hu Echadi Ain Leam Shilo Lach Bira Beli Reshit Beli Sachlit Velo Aos Veha Misra Behu Eli Vechai Goali Betsur Hevli Beet Sara Behu Nisi Umanosli Menat kosi beyom ekra. Iyadoy avkid ruhi. Iyesi shan v'yahira v'yiruhi v'yasi. Adonai v'lo v'yira. So you got me saying a little bit, and see, this is one of those things. If you if you had spent time being an observant Jew, you know that by heart, and you can't not sing it, right? It's it's daily. Wow! And and, and uh, Rabbi Goldstein has put the the translation in the chat for everybody. You know, this is this is like a, a prayer that everybody sings. Um, so Brandon is driving and asked that we read it, so I'll read it out for everybody. Eternal Lord, who reigned supreme when no other beings had yet been created. At the time when everything was created by your will, then were you proclaimed, proclaimed ruler. 
and when everyone in the universe will have ended, you will rule alone in awesomeness. You have been, you are, and you will be glorious. You are one, there is no other, to be compared to you or to be your equal. You have no beginning and no end. Power and dominion are yours. Yeah, I have to say I've heard a lot of these kinds of phrases in 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 um, in, in uh, uh, Christian and other prayers too. Uh, even Pete Townsend has a song with uh, um, with that verse, that lyric. You have no beginning and no end, and that's coming from a Buddhist tradition. In that song, um, you are my God, my living redeemer, my rock. And when I have pain and trouble, you are my banner and my refuge, the portion of my cup when I call upon you. And into your hands I commit my, my spirit, both when I'm asleep and when I'm awake. And with my spirit, my body too, Adonai. You are with me and I shall not fear. Wow. And and this is, the, you know, uh, here you are, folks, with death penalty action, and we have a as, as close to an inside um, connection to the death chamber as can be had. I don't think we've ever had this tight of a connection into it live with um, while an execution is happening in Texas. We have had it in a couple other places, um, notably with Alabama and with, with Michael Reeves and Matthew Reeves. And um, gosh, I think there was one other where we had a, you know, a direct live connection. Um, anyway, here we are. We're standing vigil. We're waiting. Um, we just heard from Rabbi Goldstein, that according to the chaplain for Texas, the head chaplain for Texas Department of Criminal Justice, they are still in a holding pattern. And here he is, this Christian pastor um, singing and reading Hebrew scriptures with uh, um, Jedediah Murphy, uh, which uh, I mean, that alone is miraculous in some ways. And, and, you know, and, and it's hard, you know, having been outside the prison, there's a, the, I'm not sure if this is the same guy, but the, the certainly tall guy with the big cowboy hat um, who is often there. And certainly he is the guy that goes with the body over to the church that they take the body to afterwards. I don't know what's going to happen with Jedediah, but, that, but I've been there where we followed the, you know, gone over to the, the church. It's about two miles away. And then that's where the family, in some cases, gets to go and and visit with the body before they do whatever they're going to do with it next. Which and it's always that's a whole other weird scene that we could talk about another time. But this guy from this this chaplain is is always there, and he comes across as you know some hardcore TD you know you know Texas you know, guy carrying out executions, but he's the chaplain and he's doing his job and and he does have um I think some compassion there. If if we're thinking about the same person, you know, and I wish I had a name and I wish I could uh make sure I'm talking about the right person. But you know, if you're outside the prison, then uh there's that. So Cheryl is asking, um oh Rabbi Goldstein has to go oh well, stay back with us, Rabbi Goldstein, if you can. When 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 um, when you get some news, please come back in, um, because uh, you know we're grateful for your presence and for everything that you've been bringing. So thank you. Um, so Cheryl's asking what uh, uh, Hever Kadisha, and a Hever Kadisha is the burial committee. Um, it's uh, so when somebody dies, then you there's um. Um, several things that happen. One is a body is never supposed to be left by itself. Um, that would be a shmira or a guardian who watches. Um, am I saying that right, Mike? Um, and uh, yeah, show a shomer or shomer. Yeah, yeah, shomer for male, shomer for a female. Traditionally, it's the same gender of this person who has died. And shmira is the is the noun, so guardian, the guardian per yeah. ship, the guardianship. 
So, you know, and, and, and so there's, I served on the burial committee of the cover condition here in Columbus for a little while when I was younger, um, which is basically there is a, a ritual. I know Muslims do this too. There's a ritual washing of the body that happens and you take all the, you know, all the jewelry off and, and, and there's a, a shroud that you dress the body in and then you place it into the casket and for Jews, uh, actually for Muslims, it's even faster. They try to bury people the day of their death and Jews, we always try to make it happen you know, the next day. Uh, sometimes it might be a couple of days, but we never put people on ice the way, um, uh, sorry if I'm saying it that way, but I mean, it always strikes me as odd when you know, somebody dies and they say, well, the funeral is going to be in two weeks and like, <laughs> um, you know, so that's that's just kind of a, a different ways that people do it, but I think that comes from you know the whole experience of of um, you know recognizing that that we need to bury people right away so that we don't um, so that they're not rotting, you know. But, but Andrea is saying it's interesting in my culture in West Virginia, where I'm originally from, someone would always sit with the body. Yes. So that's that's a part of what's going to happen, and I presume, and, and I, I never did ask Jedediah what his plans were. I was actually thinking about being in Texas for this execution, um, and it just worked out that, that it made more sense to stay here in Columbus because we have stuff going on here in Ohio. Uh, we had a 24-hour vigil this past uh from five o'clock yesterday to five o'clock today. And then tomorrow is the, the, the first hearing with testimony uh, on our bill to abolish the death penalty. So gonna be down at the Capitol with that. Um, but had I been in Texas, then I would have known that, you know, pretty much if Jedediah is executed, it's likely that he's going to be, uh, his funeral will be tomorrow and they will bury him tomorrow. Um, uh, unless there's some other plan, but Jews don't embalm people, and he did get that arrangement that they, the TDCJ would promise not to embalm him. Mike, do you know what uh, should had Jedediah, or if Jedediah is executed, or when he dies? Do you, do you know what the plan was for him? Uh, no, Just one second. Let me. Uh, no, I I don't. Um, we didn't. We didn't. Uh, I know. I knew that um, Rabbi Goldstein was with him and. Could not imagine uh, having somebody uh, there who I uh, entrusted more with um, with with these questions. So my connection with Jedediah was mainly um, advocating and trying to to save his life, and I um, and also providing some support, like I did provide a copy of the Vidui ahead of time as well. But we didn't get into the details about about those matters, which I know he he did with Rabbi Goldstein. So I don't have other information about that. So Cheryl is just asking, you know, hoping she didn't offend anybody with asking questions. And I would say, you know, this is a really unique situation for us in, a, you know, with being a Jewish prisoner and, and, and having, you know, I generally don't put it out there, but obviously I've got a little bit of experience and knowledge. I'm certainly not a Christian, a, a, a clergy person, and I don't always get it right, that's for sure. But if there's questions you want to ask about Judaism and about what's the process in this space, we're already, I've learned a lot tonight already. Um, and, um, but, but now's a good time to ask. So, you know. Uh, Abe, I, I want to, speaking of the process in terms of what you're talking about, I, I just texted you two pictures. Um, these are pictures that are shared with permission from Rabbi Yehuda Eber. Um, and he, Rabbi Yehuda Eber is somebody who uh, gave Jedediah that, that kippa that he wears in a lot of the pictures that we see in the articles. Yeah, so um, you can see that he is uh, at his synagogue and wearing a kippa head covering that he had made specifically to twin the yarmulke that Jedediah has. Um, um, so that he can be in solidarity with him as he is reciting psalms. So that is one of the traditions of, at the, at a time like this, is to to recite psalms to Helim, and um, and that's what he's doing right now, uh, from his synagogue there. Um, yeah, and that's the synagogue where he's at. So that and looks had, like a bit of a traditional Orthodox synagogue. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know exactly, exactly which, where he is, but I know he is, he's from Crown Heights originally, and he's a, a wonderful man. Rabbi Eber has been connected with Jedediah for years and they've been on talking on the phone regularly every week for years. And he told me this beautiful story, Rabbi Eber of uh, how he, Sent Jedediah. Jedediah wanted a kippah, a, a special yarmulke, because his had had faded over time, I guess. And so, so Rabbi Eber sent him one four years ago, and it happened that Jedediah received that yarmulke on October tenth, four years ago, um, which is this day. Uh-huh. And it was that was not a synchronicity that was not lost on Rabbi Eber to say that four day four years to the date of this execution now. And so Rabbi Eber is in solidarity with all of us. And he had been, I think he flew to um, to um, the Polanski unit and was with Jedediah in recent days as well. So our heart goes out to him and to everybody who's known Jedediah for, for all these years. Wow. Okay, well, it's 9.37 Eastern Time, 8.37 in, um, in Texas. Uh, according to what Rabbi Goldstein said, if they, you know, if they get to 11 p.m. and they still haven't carried out the execution, then the death warrant expires and, um, and they get to start that process again. I mean, we'll see. It's, um, again, the torture of the death penalty exhibiting itself here all of us sitting here and wait, um, which is just crazy. By the way, Brandon, I hope you're being safe while you're driving. And, and um, if I need to buy you a hotel room, let me know. Um, and uh, so you can be safe getting home. Um, I've, uh, I've asked if, um, if Rabbi Eber might want to join us on this vigil. Um, as well, um, I've been connecting with him through WhatsApp, but uh, you know he may not be available. Just uh, again, he's known Jedediah much much longer than it's hard enough for me, you know, knowing him as well as, well as I have for the past two years. But he's known him, I think, for for ten years or so, um, and um, so uh, he may want just to be on his own right now. And respect, respect whatever wishes he has. But I did ask him. <clears throat> okay well um hopefully he will join us and if we need to you could either just send him your panelist link um and you know we'll just correct his name when he gets on um but while we're waiting uh i'm gonna share with you oh, excuse me I didn't get too much sleep last night, and it was on the sidewalk outside the uh you the, the ohio state capitol um but this is the web page of Death Penalty Action for those of you who are um, new here, um, deathpenaltyaction.org. And, you know, it came off the, there's always some shifts that have to happen um, to keep the page pretty simple. Uh, but these are some of the immediate actions that are available. Um, in particular, though, new other execution petitions are here, just click on the more execution petitions tab, or you can find it also on under the drop down menu. Um, let's see, it's like we're using up a lot of bandwidth here. It's going kind of slow. There we go. But this is where you can find the, um, including tonight, four remaining executions scheduled in um, 2023. That could shift. Um, Georgia can do an execution usually within two weeks of announcing it. We're not expecting that, um, but it's possible we'll get one or two more scheduled. Hopefully not, but this is where you can sign those petitions. You can also sign the petitions for the postponed executions, many of which are here. And once we get a little bit closer to the to 2024, we'll be popping some of these people back up in there. Uh, Ivan Cantu. Um, you know, I hadn't heard anything, but we were expecting a possible uh, determination from the U.S. Supreme Court and Richard Glossop. I imagine if that had happened, we would have heard a lot about it, but that's still postponed. So there's a lot of names of people that, you know, could get their dates set again at any point. But also here under the Take Action page, if you get to Campaigns and Projects, 
Um, that's where you can find uh, some of the reporting on stuff we've done over the years. Uh, this is where you can find the, the Jewish actions and resources. You, know, you just click here and you can find, um, you know what, maybe I'll share this video here. We haven't played this in quite a while. This is about uh, about 10 minutes long. and um, But this is Rabbi Shmuel Yankowitz, who is a friend and a colleague. And, and Mike Zusman knows him and a lot of other people know him. Um, and he's a very active uh, guy. His organization is called... Um, is called, uh, oh shoot, uh, he'll tell us in this video. It, uh, well, there it is, um, uh, Uri Lutzedek, which is Orthodox Social Justice. And um, Shmuley is the, um, uh, he's on the Advisory Committee for Death Penalty Action. And this is a cutout from a program that we did on faith and the death penalty from different perspectives. Um, and this is a different take, a bit of a different take than you normally hear uh, on Judaism and the death penalty. I'm honored to be here with you all and I'm just in awe of the work you're doing and I'm grateful to be an ally and a follower in our times of great ter turmoil with um, our awareness more than ever of racial injustice, our awareness um, of the pandemic and human in interconnectivity um, and, um, and feel that we are being tested now more than ever to get these things right. And uh, capital punishment is most certainly one of those crucial elements, uh, pieces of the puzzle that determines uh, whether or not we are a just society. Brother Dale, that was a great uh, presentation. I learned a lot from that. So thank you for that. And, I can t and I'm going to bracket a, a whole lot of stuff. I'm going to be brief uh, to keep us on, on time here a little bit. But um, So I'm not going to talk about the, how the system is broken. I'm going to take for granted that we know about the racial biases that are involved in the system and those who are wrongly convicted um, and the various uh, uh, lack of uh, legal precautions and bloodthirst that are involved. And I want to suggest that actually, more than a political revolution, what is needed right now is a spiritual revolution. A spiritual revolution, and the reason for that is because there was a study done at the University of Michigan in the 70s or 80s, and it's been done a longitudinal study over the last few decades that showed the capacity for empathy in America dropped to 40% over the last few decades. That means as a white person, it's that much harder to know what it's like to be a person of color, right? As a man, it's that much harder to know what it's like to be a woman, right? As a, um, uh, uh, as it's hard, that much harder for a typical American to understand what it's like to be a Muslim or to be, to be a Jew, right? It's that much harder for a straight person to know what it's like to be queer, right? Our capacity for empathy has failed. And so too, it is very hard for many people to grasp uh, what it's like to be someone on death row. And so this is something that we need to wake up to. And so I want to lay just a few frameworks out in particular from a Jewish framework. The first we share in the biblical model, which is right from the Gan Eden, the Garden of Eden, that human beings are created but Selim Elohim in the, in the image of God. Now, what's profound about this theological statement, which we've all thought about before, is that it not only posits that there's a God, but that that God gives infinite dignity to every human being. Now, no doubt we can lose our social dignity if we commit a crime as tried in, in, in the courts, as imperfect as they may be, we lose our social dignity to wander around as we wish. But even as we lose social dignity, and prison may at times, even though this, the, the, the new Jim Crow as it exists is, uh, is, is so completely flawed, we never lose our infinite human dignity. That means there are limits to how a criminal justice system needs to operate. So that's the first category, dignity and rights that flow. And I love the Jewish theologians, uh, the Jewish theologians, uh, Emmanuel Levinas and Martin Buber, who talk about that, the, the power of the human face to awaken our moral responsibility to the other. The second category is pikuach nefesh, the value of saving a life, which, which trumps in Jewish law all other, all other requirements because of the infinite dignity of the human being, as it says in in Proverbs, you, you must rescue those taken to death. We must go to great lengths to save lives. Not lives we like or lives that are like ours or lives that resonate for us, human life. We must go to great lengths to save human life. No life should be taken prematurely. God will take lives at the time that they go, and that is for no human to do under any circumstance to take a life. That's the second category. 
and thus Jewish law, as you said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, life for a life, this stuff becomes completely retranslated, reinterpreted in the Talmud. What it means to be a responsible religious person is to reinterpret texts, um, not to be a fundamentalist and have some absolute notion of what texts say, but to continue to understand texts in our new era as to what those texts mean. And that's what the Talmud was. That's what the rabbis did to understand. And they said over there in the Talmudic tractate of Makot, every 70 years, they said, how often should a person be put to death? Every 70 years um, is what Rabbi Elzer ben Azariah says. But Rabbi Tarfon and Rabbi Akiva come back and say, no, no, if we were in a court, no person would ever be put to death because they say the evidence that is required to be reliable evidence is such a high requirement that it can virtually or perhaps never be achieved. To properly have evidence that is so solid that we're going to take a life um, is so solid that it, that it cannot be achieved. That's the second framework. Third framework is that all people can do teshuva. Forget the wrongly convicted. Let's say someone did the most, most ho uh, horrific things we can imagine. And yet still, every soul is redeemable. That is to say, no person is irredeemable. No person can, can not transform their life, their moral consciousness, their spiritual being. To kill someone is to say you are irredeemable. That is the lack of faith. Um, the quintessential abandonment of faith is to say the image of God within the human being is gone. They are irredeemable. This is impossible, according to Jewish theology. Okay, and then the fourth, um, the fourth and perhaps last one I'll share today, although I can go on for a long time, is the question of the goal of criminal justice itself. We live in an era in the tension of, and I'm sorry, I'm going to use some philosophical words for a moment, deontology versus consequentialism. Deontology means, the, or in, in this context, just deserts. People get what they deserve. You kill someone, you deserve death. Today in America, people like just deserts. You should get what you deserve, right? But there's another model of criminal justice, and that's consequentialism. That the goal of, the goal of criminal justice system is actually to achieve the good society that is good for all parties. The victim, the perpetrator, the families, the taxpayers, the entirety of the system of, of deterrence, right? These various goals we think of for all parties in society, how do we achieve the good as opposed to just whack someone because they deserve it, right? This is not a Jewish framework where all parties need to be considered in thinking about a responsible justice system. On a personal level, as, a, as not only an American, um, but as a Jew, Jewish history was about persecution of the Jews, P pogrom and crusade and, and the Holocaust, and a history of, at the very, very best, being a second-class citizen, Jews were killed at will without protection. And so not only does our text inspire me, but our history inspires me to say everyone needs legal protection to ensure their rights and dignity are, are upheld. That's why countless rabbis have signed on to our statement to oppose the death penalty under in all circumstances in America. So just to, to sum up the four frameworks I've laid out, and there's so much more to say. The first is from Genesis, the image of God, that that can never be lost, our infinite human dignity. The second is the notion of pikuach nefesh, that we have a moral and Jewish legal mandate to save lives, every life. No human life should be taken under any consequence. Um, um, uh, that is, of course, bracketing cases like warfare and self-defense, um, which is a whole different framework. Thirdly, um, the notion of teshuva, of repentance, that no soul is irredeemable, uh, even those who ha have actually done horrific things, um, that, doesn't, that never means they warrant, they warrant death. And lastly, zooming out at the goal of criminal justice itself and a deontological versus a consequentialist approach and asking what actually works to foster a just society not just to what do people deserve, but what actually pragmatically and practically works. Um, and then I reflected on this notion of, of being a Jew myself in addition to the human experience. So I want to stand as an ally uh, to this great work that those on the front lines are doing because uh, I'm really in awe of the work and say this is not only about those human lives that are on death row as much as it is about that because they have infinite value. This is about the soul of our nation. We are in a fight right now for Black Lives Matter to say uh, that racial injustice has always been the bedrock of what this country is about, white supremacy, and the, the, the institution of capital punishment is a part of the white supremacy and patriarchy as, as, as at its worst. 
and the Jewish community stands at allies not only with people of color, but with anyone who's working for abolition of Death Poem America. I'm honored to be a part of this and to continue to learn from all of you here. Thank you so much. So obviously that that video was from right uh, the the summer that um, that George Floyd was murdered and and in that space that's that's why you heard so much reference to to that but obviously it all remains true today. Um, so I was sharing with you just things from the um, the Death Penalty Action webpage as we continue to hold out hope for a, um, a different outcome than what we expected, uh, or unless, of course, you were expecting a, uh, a stay. Uh, Cantor Zussman. Uh, yes, I see. I, I raised my hand, didn't I? <laughs> Uh, that was uh, unintentional, but um, <laughs> I wish I could tell you that I had some, I'm going to put it down. I wish I could say that I had some news. I don't. And I, um, you know, I, I was watching the the video as you were, and it's just um, very powerful. You know, uh, Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuley is, uh, has been an inspiration. He's been involved in this work and with death penalty action since before I was. And um, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I just I hope that this fire is lit, you know, no matter what happens tonight, that the fire is lit. The goal of the of L'chaim has been to help mobilize the Jewish world and get get make this a Jewish is, a Jewish issue. I can't think of, you know, when I, when I started with this with L'chaim, some of the pushback I got with with other, from others was that, oh, the death penalty is not a Jewish issue. Huh. Here we are. Right, with a Jewish man about to be executed. Here we are in the wake of the last death sentence rendered by the federal government being that of the Tree of Life synagogue shooter. Here we are in a in a ostensibly um, secular society, but one that's really built upon uh, that's majority Christian and where uh, a lot of um, Christian values uh, come forward for better or for worse. And um, the Judeo-Christian shaped by Judeo-Christian history. And so what Rabbi Shmuley was referencing, you know, ayin tachat ayin, eye for an eye, that is commonly, so commonly thrown around as far as, as, far as the justification for, for, this, um, for this death penalty. And it's uh, based upon a misunderstanding and a misreading of the Jewish interpretation of that text. And so not only is it a Jewish issue, but I I really believe that the Jewish world has a responsibility to um to to continue the 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 torch that was lit by Elie Wiesel and others in this country toward the the goal of abolition. And you, Abe, from the, your decades of abolition work, and you know, uh, um, uh, and 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 Rabbi Sh Rabbi Shmuley, and just carrying that torch and continuing to light that fire when i spoke with sister helen the other day you know she was talking about keeping that fire lit and having the fire um the, that passion lit and um that's what we have to do so i i hope we are able to maintain that i really do oh thank you mike um you know <laughs> gabby's conked out there uh she's in germany so it's like what four or five hours uh um, it just uh, uh, cut it off. Oh, she's sleeping. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> the uh, it, but we're all kind of waiting. I, I see. Um, I don't know if I'm saying this right. Peyton um, Smith has come back, uh, um, <laughs> covering Gabby with a blanket. Um, she is uh, uh, asking. Just she had to go away and came back. And and I just want to excuse anybody that if you need to go, go. You can always watch this later, but you can always come back. Um, uh, but uh, no, the the update is that there's that, that you know there's a lot of confusion, and we've had even the Associated Press reported earlier that both stays had been vacated. 
Uh, we didn't even know there was a second state, but there it was. And, but actually, uh, well, let's go look at the Supreme Court docket once again uh, and just see if there's anything new. Up, oh, well, here we are. Let's see what we get. Cert is denied. The application for a stay of death sentence um, is denied. Shit. Is that the is that new? This is brand new. This is on twenty three five seven four zero, which is well, that's that's a different one still than case twenty three seven seven. So 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 we don't know. 23A316, I'm just looking and comparing. Let me just share my screen with you so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, so I'm looking at, at um, this is the one from before. And this is the new one, 235740. And this is the case number that See, this one appears to still be in motion. Um, and that is regarding the, the drugs? I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mara is raising your hand. What do you got, Mara? Go ahead and talk, Mara. I think you're muted. Uh, Mara, you're muted. Do you want to say something? She might have raised her hand that erroneously as I did. That's what's happened. So, so there's something new on the, the Supreme Court page, but it doesn't appear to match the case. So we're going to see what happens. We are, you know, it's... it's um, uh, we are at, um, what time is it? It's all, uh, approaching 9 p.m. Central Time. And if we get to 11 without anything happening, then the, ex the uh, execution uh, date expires. Um, let's see if they, uh, you know, we haven't had a night like this in a while. And certainly this is exceptionally confusing. Um, oh. It, no, I just refreshed it and it came off again. It okay. came off. Let me, let me just no, no, this is it. Um, but it's not again. It still doesn't have the case number for what we were looking for. Right. Um, so maybe Rob Dunham or somebody in the legal world can come back to us and tell us what's going on because we don't know because. Um, uh, there was uh, there was a tweet from Rob Dunham eight minutes ago. It says, as of 9.45 p.m. Eastern, there is nothing on the SCOTUS public website on Jedediah Murphy's cert petition and stay motion concerning the potential damage to the execution drugs in a prison fire. So that must be what this is. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to uh, <clears throat> check. I'm going to send that see if i can send that to you hold on here if you uh, go to his if you go to his twitter um you'll find it yeah so well let's see now this was um i'm just back here i'll just get this so y'all can watch it and look at it with me because what do i know i'm just an abolitionist <laughs> uh, so, so this is twenty three five seven four zero. Yeah, that's the one that he's referencing. Twenty three five seven four zero. That's this one, um, and this is the docket. And this was about the stay of execution. Um, and this was. Do, 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 Unusual constitutional challenges to the method of execution, not a run in the mill situation. Uh, okay, yeah, so this was the drugs case. So they have denied the stay based on the drugs case, and that is now actually posted. So that's what that is. Um, well, according to 
to this tweet um as of nine uh, as of nine forty five um there is nothing posted concerning the potential damage to the execution drugs in a prison fire so that's, that's maybe that's what this is twenty three five seven four zero so this is the one that we're looking well this is the, this is another one that was denied and that's not up there um closing these out so so those are the two we are still looking for um this one i think um Yeah, this is the, the DNA one. So this is case number, it's not on there. Yeah, so this is the one we're still waiting for a ruling on, 23700005. See, I'm looking at that right there, 23705. We are still waiting for an order in that. And this one is, this one is 23A308 or 23CV1170, whatever, right? Uh, and then this one here is 235740 or 23A316. So we, are, we, we do not have an order yet. Well, uh, everything you just said makes sense to me <laughs> based on based on what you you showed me i am not an attorney nor do i know but you know i mean anybody can look at this stuff y'all can find this on the supreme court web page it's right. Right case documents uh uh docket search orders of the court you know that's where it is uh i want to note we have been joined here by randy gardner hey randy Except your name says Charles Keith. Let's fix that because we know you're not Charles Keith. Um, but Randy Gardner knows oh, that's not a good look for you, Randy. Um, <laughs> just hold that phone up in front of your face. Um, okay, so Randy Gardner is the brother. He knows what this, these nights are like. He's the brother of of Ronnie Lee Gardner, who was executed by firing squad in Utah some more than a decade ago and was just watching on Facebook. I said, hey, Randy, come on over and um, share a few thoughts with us. Um, so, Randy, welcome. Do you want to unmute? You got to unmute, brother. There we go. Does that work? Yes, that's much better. Hear me now? Okay. So, you know, tell hey, everybody. Us, tell us a little bit about what yeah, you have to yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm uh, here in Salt Lake City, and I know World Day Against the Death Penalty. I'm normally pretty involved in stuff like this. Uh, I just got in a different situation where I'm taking care of some stuff for myself here. So, but yes, my, my brother was executed. It was actually about 13 years ago. And then Utah, he was the last person executed by firing squad. Um, it's been a roller coaster ride ever since. And I never really realized there was people like Gabe and, and anybody else who was really fighting for the against the death penalty. Uh, I got involved because I didn't have no one to talk to and Googled somebody. And the late great uh, Bill Pelkey called me back within an hour. And I was in Texas and it's the idea of uh, fighting against the death penalty and i was on the board of hope of journey of hope for about eight years and it got to be a little bit overwhelming in my head and i resigned from that but i still go to events quite a bit when i have the opportunity um this stuff is just so sad for me i've been to uh huntsville in texas for two different executions and one of them was actually a cop killer and when someone kills a cop they, when they execute the guy, they rev up their motorcycles. Is that right, Abe? Yeah. Or that's not, that's not, yeah. And, and to me, that was 
the element of disrespect to everybody involved in it, including the, the officers doing it. It's like, you know, how can you find joy and take joy in something like this? You know, everybody's life matters. And uh, I think it's just a terrible thing they're doing. And, you know, tonight taking so long that, I mean, you'd want to, we want to think that's a good sign because they're reviewing the evidence and it takes a while. So, you know, I think it's this bull that they have that the time restraint you can't file because of you already didn't file and that type of stuff is just crazy to me if there's evidence you know to prove somebody guilty or innocent you know the laws need to be changed and we shouldn't be excluded because it's time refrained and you know texas is a killing state you know i've been there many times on on events and it never gets any easier yeah so um stephanie serenus is asking exactly which case and you know it, it all i know is that there as far as we know there's there's still no execution happening and it's uh, it's really confusing um but to to look at these case numbers and to to sort out what's actually happening um we you know, we're kind of waiting. We're in a holding pattern because what we should know, let me just go, is anybody still watching over on the, um, oh, there's Paul, hold on one moment. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, uh, well, let me just say while, while Abe is uh, on the phone there, Randy, uh, there was a comment in the chat. I don't know if you can see the chat um, uh, where, uh, Ebony says, so sorry for your unimaginable, horrific loss, Randy, for you and your family. Thanks for sharing your story and voice. You know, for those of us who, um, like myself, uh, I'm, I'm a former prison chaplain, but I'm not a family member of, of someone involved in this. I can't begin to imagine the, the um, Herculean effort it must take to continually put yourself out there. And um, I just want to acknowledge the, the gratitude for what you're doing and what you've done for so long. Uh, it honors your brother's memory. Well, friends, I'm, I'm sorry to say it looks like it's done. It looks like it's um, the, uh, all the stays have been lifted and it looks like they're gonna go through with the execution. Well, that was a pretty good case. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Sir, it is tough. Yeah, but I, I, I still I can't not do it. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my thank, thank God you're here, and um, thank God we're we're all here. Um, I, oh. uh, I unfortunately I was I was fearing the worst, and and so you know, Abe, when you said that, I. I, I wish I could say it came as a shock, a surprise, but I, 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 I was um, somewhat resigned to this, to this for a long time, and that's why I recorded those videos when I did because I had this awful feeling that this is where we were going to be today. So, did did you hear a timetable, Abe, about when when this exactly would would happen? Um, the timetable is likely to be any time now um and let's see if we can get um let's see let me try to get shivas on just texting down let's go over to look at what's happening on the prison pay in prison um No, I didn't say five o'clock. I said there's a group of people. Hey, right. while you're doing that, I can I can offer one other brief song. Uh, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> um, we were talking before about how Jedediah was also aware that this might happen, and in his last messages, he was also advocating for 
um, for peace and for uh, resolution to the conflict in, in Israel as well. And so I'd like to, I believe, I feel that he would want this to be part of this vigil at this time, a brief prayer for, for peace, for the world, and for an end to all killing, the killing we're seeing here, the killing we're seeing in Israel and Palestine. And um, this song is just a reference to that. It has the words for peace, shalom and salam. And it means uh, literally the song, there still can be peace. Od yavo shalom aleinu. Od yavo shalom aleinu. There still can be peace for us and all the world. Salam aleinu ve'al kol ha'olam. Salam shalom. Shalom aleinu ve'al kol ha'olam, salam shalom. May there be peace and may we see a day with no more killing. Amen. And I, I know that. Um, Sorry, I, I just um, I was just trying to find the. It doesn't look like the prison folks are live now, so can't get a a, a live stream. But maybe Shavas will join us again. Um, he was texting me to say that they have to drive him somewhere, but I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Shavas, so you, if you're able to, to, to come back on, then please do. Um, have you seen the witnesses cross the street? Question mark. I still on me. Mike, do you have um, Dovid's um, cell phone? Maybe you can text him and see if he wants to come back. Waiting for a message here from Shabbos and see what he's got uh, up. The, the witnesses have crossed. And what that means is, for those of you who are new, um, Earlier, we showed you some images of outside the prison. You got the prison, there's a road, and across the street from the road is the administration building, and that's where the witnesses are held, uh, media witnesses and others. And when they cross the street, it means they're going over to be witnesses to the execution, which means that Jedediah Murphy is about to be executed um, in the coming minutes. Jeff, if you want to, Jeff, can you hear me? If you want to grab a English version of twenty third Psalm, and we'll go with the Hebrew at this time, as we hold Jedediah Murphy in in, in prayer and in our spirits and our thoughts. Cantor Michael Zeusman, with the thousands of members of L'Chaim, Jews Against the Death Penalty and Death Penalty Action, coming to you from our broken sukkah, 
at this time of war in Israel and at this time of state killing of our Jewish pen pal in Texas, Jedediah Murphy, who we've known for years and who has been my pen pal and friend. If you're watching this video, it means that Texas is placing him in the valley of the shadow of death. As we always do, this is Psalm 23, which references that. I'll chant it in the Hebrew and invite you to consider it in the English, or if prayer is not part of your tradition, or if you're from a different spiritual tradition, simply to offer your thoughts and energy to Jedediah now. As he is inhuman, inhumanly and inhumanely placed by humankind in the valley of the shadow of death. And just as the moon casts a light into this broken sukkah, may this prayerful energy bring some light to Jedediah and all of us, his loved ones. Mizmor Lidavin Adonai Roi Lo Binot deshe yarbitseni al me menuchot yinachaleni nafshi shove nafshi shove yanecheni. Yeah. 
Yehi Shalom. May there be peace. L'chaim. A Psalm of David. The 23rd Psalm. God is my sh I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures. It is God who leads me beside still waters. It is God who restores my soul. It is God who leads me in paths of righteousness. For God's name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Even in this very moment. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for God is with me. Both the rod and the staff of God. They comfort me. It is God who prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It is God who anoints my head with oil. Surely my cup overfloweth. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in God's house forever and ever. Amen. I take refuge in the Buddha, the one who shows me the way in this life. I take refuge in the Dharma, the way of understanding and of love. I take refuge in the Sangha, the community that lives in harmony and awareness. Dwelling in the refuge of Buddha, I clearly see the path of light and beauty in the world. Dwelling in the refuge of Dharma, I learn to open many doors on the path of transformation. Dwelling in the refuge of Sangha, shining light that supports me, keeping my practice free of obstruction. Taking refuge in the Buddha in myself, I aspire to help all people recognize their own awakened nature, realizing the mind of love. Taking refuge in the Dharma in myself, I aspire to help all people fully master the ways of practice, and walk together on the path of liberation. Taking refuge in the Sangha in myself, I aspire to help all people build fourfold communities to embrace all beings and support their transformation.
We're now waiting for word from our friends that are at the prison. I don't know what's happening with their live stream, but um, they're not bad drugs. No, hopefully it goes smoothly. Yeah. Just watching the Twitter stream, looking for word. I on my prayers go out to his family. This is where the collateral damage comes in. Family members and friends, what well, we have to live with. And it's just people have no idea what they're going to go through until they, until they live it. And that's why I fight it. I don't want no one to feel like I felt in my life. And we know it's been a slog for you, Randy, and we're grateful that you're still with us to be able to be witness to it. Uh, looks like here comes um, Edward. Edward, the execution has gone forward. Um, Would they have about a half hour to, to ten thirty there in Texas? It's nine thirty. Oh man. Thank you.
Hey, but if they need someone to talk to, make sure they have my contact information as family members. Sure. It's because that's probably, that's probably what I'm best at. At least I've been through what they've been through. Chris Geidner is writing, you know, there's so much more that I'll have to write about SCOTUS's behavior, but now is not the time. Um, Try, Chris. Are you okay, Mr. Randy? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm not all right, but what we do, I guess. Which What's going on your mind? What's on your mind? What's going on right now? You're talking to me? Yes, me? sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I just kind of relive, reliving what, what we went through, you know, and it's, I mean, I was in shock for a couple of days. I, you know, it didn't really hit me for a few days after, but, you know, and being it was an execution by firing squad, we, it was a circus out here in Utah. So, uh, a lot of a lot of media was there, and it's just like a couple of days later. Though it's just I just can feel how those family members are feeling. I up until a couple of years ago, I literally had dreams nightly, weekly. I mean, of me executing my kids or me executing my mom. My mom sitting in a wheelchair as I shoot her, and her heart blows out and blood splatter all over, and I couldn't get over this these nightmares that I had. And I'm a pretty tough guy, but uh, I finally did get a therapist and worked me through it. And, okay, turn that. You know, I'm over that. You're uh, you're Ronnie had Lee. Had one in, in a couple of years, and that. You're Ronnie Lee Garner's brother, aren't you? Correct. I, okay, I know I recognize you. I've seen you. I, I respect what you've done. By the way, when you've protested and showed pictures of your brother and what is murder, I, I've seen. I I respect you so much, sir. For, and you've had the you've had the gall to show people what murder is, you know, and how they killed your brother. I I, I respect yeah. you. I've never met you, but I respect the hell out of you, sir. Thank you. That's probably yeah, one of the hardest things I had to do. So yeah. Guys, but we got uh, Shavasa back that, with us. Yeah. Randy, Randy, we're gonna get a report here from Shavasa. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, boss. Hi, everybody. Um, Shalom, shalom to the Jews. Very uh, difficult outcome for all of us. And I know all of y'all on the on the on the sit in as well. Um, we just saw the walk out about uh, Less than 15 minutes ago, um, we we stayed updated on the uh, Supreme Court website and saw that the the writ of Sotorori was denied. And uh, just say goodbye to Jedediah's uh, sister and brother. And we just, you know, we just can't. We just can't get the fact that corruption wins out of our out of our dialogue. We're sitting here looking at guards who are laughing, having a good time this evening, and 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 it and it, and it hurts. It hurts. We had so many people praying. We had guys on the road praying. We had guys on the road hoping that he would Jedediah would return tonight and and we're still here 936 
still here. Yeah. And and it it yeah. just sucks, man. It just sucks. Like like what what do we have to do? And the world to, safe. To end this to end the death penalty in this state. Like is it is, is like does anybody on this call think it it, it takes just votes? Cuz I mean, we could vote all we want to and they'll just they'll hide the votes. They'll they'll take names off of the ballots. They'll, they'll do whatever they have to do to keep corruption in power. This 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 guy I I, I used to read his appellate files when I was locked up. You talk about a guy that changed his life. Like I, I don't even see any legislators talking publicly about this. Like where where's where's Ron Reynolds and James Tellerico and and Joe Moody and and some of these others? Where are they tonight? Like corruption wins, corruption continues. We got to come back here in a couple of weeks. It, it it's taxing on our spirits. You know, some some of the ladies here have been coming for decades. Abe, you and you and some of the others have been fighting this fight for decades. Um, it just sucks, man. It, it sucks. You got a media crew that's seeming to to love to watch us in despair and and and, and watch us in our somber emotion, so they can get the best shot or the best angle. And you know, I, I'm definitely not here for that. I'm not here to have my name shared and, and to be heard. I'm 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 here because I was holding on to hope. It, it shit hurts, man. It, it hurts. I can't I can't help but think of Clarence Brantley. I can't help but think of Anthony Graves. I can't help but think of Anthony Sanchez. I can't help but think of Julius Jones. I can't help but think of Richard Glossop. And I'm not trying to be a misogynist. I'm not trying to be a chauvinist and just say male names. I I, I think about Melissa Lucio every seven minutes. I think about Erica Shepard every 15. We've got five other women on Texas women's death row. It is it's disgusting. Six more. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's five more. Because I named two, Melissa and Erica. And and it it is it's, it's really sad, man. I, I applaud you brothers and sisters who have been able to achieve abolition um, in your state. We, we've, got, we've got this republic here in Texas. I mean, we're even looking at the walls unit and wondering, could it pass a health and safety code? You know what I mean? Like with a, with a fire weeks ago, you still see the debris and, and the decay in the building. And we're wondering how, how are guys in there, you know? our guys in there and not inhaling stuff that'll kill them anyway, you know, like it, 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 it sucks. And, and it's funny, Abe, it's funny, it's funny, y'all. I, I walked out the front door of the Huntsville unit and I just wish Jetta died could have received the same, the same outcome. It, it, it sucks. We're, get, we're getting calls from all over the world. We're getting messages from all over the world. I know y'all are too. The folks that just were holding on to hope, you know, um, the fight continues, right? The fight continues. The fight continues with us just losing uh, brother Michael Zach in, in Florida. And this is a seesaw of harm and, and, and despair. But we gotta, we we gotta pray. We gotta, we gotta stay together and and continue to uplift each other to 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 push forward in this movement. As we know, this isn't a winning battle, but you know, we've got to continue fighting. Because, you know, in the 70s, we, you know, we did get the 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 federal death penalty abolished. So, you know, it's not like nothing has ever happened. It just seems like nothing could ever happen in this state. But we're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep trying and keep praying and, and, and continuing to speak up, continuing to advocate. And we will keep Jedediah Murphy's name in, 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 in high grace, in high favor, and speak the beautiful things about his spirit. 
the beautiful things about his transformation. But we, we we've got we, we've got men that he left that were just hoping that he would have got got back tonight so they could hold on to hope too. So let us think about the brothers and the sisters that are going to sleep tonight in tears or who can't go to sleep at all because they fear of their, their date coming up soon. Um, it, it's, it's a travesty. Anibal, Anibal Canales is innocent. Melissa's innocent. Good man. Kasul, Kasul deserved a second chance. Arthur Brown deserved a second chance. I appreciate the space. Hey, thank you for trusting me to be here uh, with, with y'all in spirit. And, um, and it's going to be a, a, a hard ride back to Houston. Well, be safe, brother. And thank you for making the trip out there today and for being our eyes and ears. Mike, Shivas, take care. Be, be, be safe. Looks like you've spotlighted me, Abe. I have. Um, so I want to make sure that you get a. All I'll say is this: um, that, that uh, tonight, Texas has tortured a man to death. Has tortured our friend who happens to be Jewish. Jedediah Murphy has tortured him to death. And along with him, all of us who've known him. So Texas has tortured humanity in this way and has made a mockery of this world day against the death penalty where the theme is torture. And we will continue fighting with every breath that we have in us until the torture ends. And as I said in my last email to Jedediah, in modern Hebrew, the word for goodbye is lehitraot, which comes from the phrase, until we see one another again, until we see one another again. And so that's what I offered because in the Jewish tradition, this idea of olam haba, the world to come, that we will see each other again. And so I offered him a toast again, and I said, L'chaim, to life everlasting. So may we meet in Olam Haba, in the world to come. And until then, I believe that Jedediah's spirit will help us as the spirit of so many others whom Shabazz and, some, and everyone here has mentioned to guide us on the path toward abolition. Kenya Hiratzon, may it be the divine will. Amen. 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 Kenya Hiratzon, indeed. Thank you, Mike. Jeff, any final thoughts? Yeah, just go and um, be angry for a little while, rage for a little while, be pissed off for a little while, but in the midst of all of that, try to love for a little while as well. And remember that all of these emotions, they go together and um, they feed us as abolitionists. So feel, feel what you're experiencing tonight the grief that you will feel after this, the grief in the days to come, and may such grief give you power, power to overcome it all, overcome the death penalty, overcome injustice, marginalization, oppression. It's all connected. It's all connected. So don't so keep up the fight. Randy, closing thoughts. 
<laughs> it's tough, Abe. I, I just can never believe that this is still happening in today's society. And it's like every time I have hope, and I know everybody's working as hard as they can to fight this thing, you know, and it's just we've got a a terrible Supreme Court as far as I'm concerned. And it's, it's very lopsided. And, uh, you know, we need to do something about that. That's, that seems to be where the final decisions has been made all the time. And, you know, they're not making the right decisions. You know, I just uh, hope the family members of Jedediah, you know, find peace and, you know, because he's at peace and, you know, reach out to someone, talk to people about it. You can, don't hold it in. That's all I can say suggest you know the more you talk about it the more it helps you you know and that's i've seen that with my brother's daughter that don't talk about it and she's pretty messed up 13 years later and she don't even talk to anybody anymore as far as on this side of the family so yeah and the only thing that's kept me going is just to keep talking you know i'm never going to get closure but you know i'm compelled to do it if i didn't do it i'd be much worse off so thank you Thank you, everybody, for your comments in the chat and for being here and sticking with us tonight. Again, we're we're at five hours since the start of this thing um, tonight. So about uh, it is um, every one of these is hard. And especially the ones where, you know, the injustice is clear. I mean, every one of these is an injustice, right? Um, but especially in a case like this, where we know that they lied in order to get Jedediah on death row. And then they refuse to rectify the wrong. But tonight, what we all did together and what we are doing together is shining a spotlight on it. We're making sure the world knows. We know that the world is watching. And each of us who is part of this event tonight, we are scarred. We are hurt. And... At least for me, I know it 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 adds fuel to the fire. It adds motivation to keep going. As hard as it is, it adds power because it's one more story of injustice that we have to tell the world. And that's what we have to do, is keep telling the world. So I want to thank each and every person that is still watching and each and every person that couldn't stick with it tonight, uh, but we're here. And everybody that signed the petition, thousands and thousands of people, we've delivered your petition signatures, everybody that's made the phone calls, it's not in vain. Every single one of these executions creates more abolitionists, more people who have had their eyes open to how the system fails us. And in particular, you know, I, I, I think that the, especially you, Mike, um, but together, Lachaim, Jews Against the Death Penalty and Death Penalty Action, and everybody else has helped. We were able to grant the wish that Jedediah brought to us, which was he wanted people to understand what happened to him and what needs to happen to keep that from happening to anyone else. And we were able, in numerous occasions, to get the word in print in places where they don't really talk about this for too much, um, the facts that Jedediah fell through the cracks of society's safety nets. And that's why that murder happened in the first place. 
and then he fell through the cracks of a system that allows police and prosecutors to lie and get away with it. And more people are paying attention to that. So as we stand witness tonight, what we're doing is keeping the fires burning and shining a spotlight on this. And we just keep, we, we get to take a break. We get to rest. We get to process and we get to keep going. So I'm grateful to each and every one of you that's watching still for being here and for asking yourself, what do I do next to make sure more people know about these atrocities and join the movement to stop them? Matt, Have a safe night.